impact for the South Wales Warriors was instrumental in that victory? I mean, yeah, he, he ended up being the over MVP for the game, uh, which is incredible, obviously, for the South Wales Warriors. But also his stats just kind of say it also. Obviously, 14 completions out of 35 attempts, 177 yards passing, one TD. Unfortunately, three interceptions, but interceptions when you're going up against a good defence, it's bound to happen. Um, then five carries himself with uh, 27 yards. So... To the uninitiated, a 13-0 shutout might sound like a bit of a one-sided affair, but it wasn't that way at all. No, it wasn't. It was very tight even going into the fourth quarter, neither team really taking control. And we had that point in the third quarter where there was a bit of a stalemate going on between both teams. And we thought maybe the Bournemouth could come back into it, but they never managed to break down that tough South Wales defence. And in the end, it was Dean Jackson that had to take to his heels a little on those bootleg scrambles as he uh, play-actioned out of run and coming to the edge and then getting the ball down deep to his receivers. And it was him that earned the, the victory in the end of that 13 nothing win. But it was close up till the fourth. And deservedly for the South Wales Warriors for the entirety of the game, I think they would probably deserve that crown more, a little bit more than the uh, Bobcats. Yeah, for sure. Once again, you see the difference in the offensive, in the offensive stats. So Wales were their total offence was 228 yards. Yeah, that says it in sure. itself against Bobcats who just managed over 100. So it, it, it kind of... It's one of those situations where Bournemouth obviously were doing well, they were driving the ball, and then something would happen and it would bring it back. Absolutely. Um, and I think that was where Bournemouth, uh, Bournemouth unfortunately had their downfall slightly. You mentioned already, Carl, both teams already promoted to Division 1 yep. next season. How do you think they'll fare with that step up in uh, competition? Yeah, I think they'll do okay. You know, it is a big step up. They're going to have to have a good off-season. Both of those teams are now going to have to recruit for new players. That's part of the path, of course, if you're moving up from one division to another. Bournemouth, a 10-year uh, history, and they've never played Division 1 football. For South Wales, they've been there before. They've been in the Premiership. They've been in Div 1. They know the deal. But Bournemouth is going to be a big step up for them. Nevertheless, they showed some real promise in the game yesterday, and we'll see how they perform against that Div 1 competition. But that's what you want to do. You want to progress each year and get better, and uh, that's what they're going to need to do, build and come back hard. And that's why this weekend is kind of nice for all the teams involved because they're all walking away as winners. All these teams that are playing this weekend have been promoted already, obviously apart from the Premiership teams and the Under-19 teams because they're already at the top flight of their particular division. But for the Division 2 teams, the Division 1 teams, they've got that first goal of getting to that next level and this was all about putting the icing on the cake. This was about making a statement to their, to their future rivals so to say, because making this statement and showing them we are now the overall Division 2 or Division 1 champions, that's just showing that's just showing the Britball Nation, basically, we are here and next year we are willing to put up a fight. Don't you forget that. Absolutely. So that was the Division 2 South game yesterday. There is a Division 2 North Championship going on as well, and that takes place on September the 7th, and we'll learn who the winners of the North are at that point. So Division 2 was all wrapped up with South Wales being crowned as champions. Then in the afternoon, we saw a fantastic game between the Samwell Steelers and the Solent Thrashers, and this one early on looked like it was going to be dominated by the Thrashers as they scored after the second play from scrimmage. They did, and it was all run, run, run from Solent, wasn't it? They had that great running back, number 25, Adam Bowley. Uh, he was just fantastic from the, from the first drive. Uh, you, you get a chance to see the highlight. Do have a look at it because he blasted through uh, the, the initial defensive line and then he split two defensive backs that had good pursuit lanes. But Bowley was just spectacular early on and they took that early 7 nothing lead. And we thought Samuel were going to be out of it, but Samuel did come back into the game later on and it made for a very, uh, a very great grandstand finish to see which of these teams was going to take control in the end. Well, it was, Tash. It was... It was Solent early on, and you wondered. It was almost like Samwell were caught in the headlights early on, right after that second play. But then for the next couple of quarters, Samwell were dominant. Yeah, I think that that's what changed the game, and it made Solent realise this wasn't just going to be a walkover. It made Solent come into this game, because obviously when you watch the game, so if you have a chance to rewatch any of the games from yesterday, please do, because they are fantastic shows. Um, but when you watch them and you see that Solent were winning, Samwell came back, they were winning, and then Solent, right at the, during that last minute, managed to get that touchdown to take the game. It was, it was a spectacular finish, and I think it was what Solent needed. They started to utilise Bowley, as, as, as we were saying, because his speed was, was undeniable. It was, it was the thing that won them the game. Absolutely. But having said that, from a defensive point of view, and you being a defensive coordinator yourself, yeah. there was a certain player for the Thrashers that you obviously highlighted as being instrumental yesterday. Yeah, number 78, the defensive end for the Solent Thrashers, uh, Alua is his name, was just a phenomenal uh, athlete and just great 
technique, using his hands, using his body. Uh, I've not seen a, 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 an athlete like that in the British game for some time. He was really spectacular. Calls a forced fumble, uh, had three sacks himself, knocked the ball into the air. Tristan Varney, one of the best uh, British quarterbacks playing for the Samuel Steelers. Um, Alua terrorised him mm. all day long. Um, and uh, some spectacular plays. If you get a chance to see the highlights of him, although Adam Bowley got the MVP with the three touchdowns on the offense, and I guess you're always going to give it to the offense because they're the ones that are causing the fireworks. But Alua, for me, was uh, the MVP of the game for the Thrashers. Absolutely spectacular play. Well, you and I spoke yesterday in pregame about the fact that to look out for Tristan Varney and the arm he had and the way he conducted the offense. But as you say, Alua really terrorized him and, and made it difficult all day. And the, the uh, Steelers couldn't really get that ground game going at all. And they had to rely on Varney and Alua then was very disruptive. I mean, once again, we'll go back to stats. Um, minus five rushing yards for Samwell that yeah. just shows how much they struggled yesterday on the ground but through the air you talk about obviously how instrumental a QB can be and he, w he was the most instrumental person on the Samwell offense because Jason Varney can put that ball through the air and he knew exactly where he wanted it every single time and who he wants to pass it to and that was the reason why he got the passing yards that he did. And that's the thing. If you give Tristan Varney that sort of time, he will pick you apart with Alex Sadler and uh, Stephen Kinnersley uh, amongst the other receivers out there. And Huggins yesterday was really instrumental. Uh, the, the running back who slotted out a receiver and caught a couple of absolutely fantastic plays to score as well. So if you give Varney time, then he will pick you apart. But Alua contradicted that. Yeah, I mean, when Varney had time, they tried to block Alua with two players. When they did that, when they managed to get him stopped at defensive line, Varney can pick apart an offense, and he did. You know, he scored two touchdowns. He was uh, getting the ball to uh, his receivers, and they were making some spectacular catches. But you can't just rely on that, uh, on that passing game. You have to give Varney a break, and you have to get the running game going in order to keep the defense honest. And, of course, they couldn't do that, and that's why Solent came out winners. It's always worth as well. We talk about the, the individual players, the Huggins, the Varneys. We talk about Bowley, but that's... Solent offensive line, the pulling guards time after time, which gave Bowley those opportunities to find the gaps, Cole. Yeah, it's Steve Raines has been around a long time. Steve Raines is the head coach for the Solent uh, Thrashers, and uh, he's been around a long time, and he's been, he's been working his running game for a very long time. So we saw all sorts of formations. We saw wishbone formation. We saw eye formation. We saw pro set. We even saw a spread. So he really tested the Samwell defense. And those pulling guards, that offensive line, are very, very well drilled. And they showed yesterday, even when Bowley went out and another running back came in, they were still effective at mm. creating gaps and holes. So uh, really well drilled side. Worth giving a shout out to the Solent quarterback as well, Sawyers, who did very well when he had to go to the air. And it was a windy day yesterday and some of the balls came out there looking a little bit more like punts than passes. But Sawyers managed to hit some of his targets effectively as well and to keep things close when Sandwell seemed to have the upper hand. I think that during the first quarter, um, particularly, he wanted to go through the air because the Sandwell DBs, their usual form... You could tell there was a couple of nerves mm. there. Um, and there would be. It's, it's a final. There's going to be nerves from, from everybody. Um, however, they weren't on form, how, but they did eventually get to where they normally are. They were getting the interception. I think that's where they physically couldn't carry on going through the air because the DBs were getting interceptions and they were causing problems for, for the QB. Absolutely. Been a fantastic weekend so far, obviously down here at the New River Stadium um, in North London. Um, you're able to get in touch with the show whenever you wish. You can see the hashtag there at the top of our screen. We'd love to be able to give you a shout out as and when we can. But the stadiums yesterday, to say we've had teams from Bournemouth and Samwell and South Wales uh, and also um, from, from Solent, the stand was full here yesterday and the atmosphere was incredible, Cole. Yeah, and they had to travel a long way as well, some of these fans, mm -hmm. I think, from Bournemouth. You, didn't you do the calculation, Matt? Was it, we did a little was bit. 168 miles? Well, Bournemouth was a little bit shorter, but, you know, they had the shortest trip, but the South Wales and, the, uh, and Solent particularly had a, had a fair old way to travel. So it was a fair old way, but nevertheless, they made the stadium come alive. There was lots of noise. Uh, you'll hear it if you see the replays. And uh, we had a thoroughly good time with good atmosphere. And we're expecting the same today. So if you're around in the locality, come down. It's going to be a great day of football. And we talked about the distance that people travel. If you're local, then it's not going to be far to you. But after this break, we're going to turn our attention to the East Kilbride Pirates and the, the uh, London Blitz, who have had a certain way to travel, the East Kilbride Pirates, obviously coming north of the border. London, not so much. But we'll hear about all their exploits when we come back shortly. We're going to run through the teams. We're going to run through scores, results, give you a few interviews, and also be able to bring you up to speed, getting you ready for this under-19 playoff final between the East Kilbride Pirates and the London Blitz. 
Is there anything we should be looking out for for this game before we actually go a bit more in detail? Well, you've got the one of the things that EKP told us before they came down is that they've had a nine hour trip. They came down yesterday uh, and they stayed over at Luton, which I guess is about 40 minutes away from here. But on the way down in the bus this morning, the bus had a little bit of an accident and scraped somebody's car. So um, they were they were all all right. They were absolutely fine. There was no serious accidents, but they have. Uh, they have had that incident this morning. Hopefully they can shrug that off and they can uh, arrive nice and fresh. We've seen them on the field. We've spoken to their head coach, so they seem OK. I think the woman's car that was great was a bit shaken up, but hopefully she's all right as well. So apologies if you were that person and you're watching. Hope you enjoy the game. And London are the home team today, and obviously we are in London, so it's a home fixture. How will they approach this one? Obviously they haven't had to do the travel, so they're probably uh, feeling a little bit more fresh uh, than, than what East Kilbride are. But I think that they're going to come into this confident. They've, owned, they, they've had a very, very successful season so far. Um, they're, a, they're an extremely well-fitted under-19 squad. And I think that um, we'll see, obviously, when we talk in a second about it all. But the, the viewers will see soon why, why we have these feelings. Well, once again, if you are just joining us, this is Onside Productions bringing you live coverage of Brit Bowl 33 from the New River Stadium here in London this morning. Um, we're going to be sh going to a break shortly, and then when we come back on the other side, we will give you all the build-up to the Under-19 final between the London Blitz and the East Kilbride Pirates. Don't go away. EP Sports brings you the UK's largest range of American football equipment, from helmets and shoulder pads to gloves and boots. They stock all the latest items from the biggest brands with great prices and fast shipping options all across Europe. What's more, EP have just launched their own team wear range, allowing you to rep your program in a huge range of garments from top suppliers. You can even set up your own team shop, and to kick things off, EP are offering up custom team polo shirts at just £10 a pop. To learn more, check out epsports.co.uk. Good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're watching this. Hope you have a great day. I hope this podcast has made you smile a little bit. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into and what we do and why we do it. But yeah, just keep on listening and thank you. Welcome back to Brit Bowl 33 weekend here, live from the New River Stadium in London. Um, welcome to our viewers who have just joined us, if you are watching on the BBC Sport website. Uh, we've just run through yesterday's events here at Brit Bowl 33, the Division 2 game and the Division 1 game. But if you are new to the sport, we're just going to spend five minutes or so just running through British American football. So, Carl Walkinshaw alongside me, along with Tash Crump. Welcome, guys. Great to have Good you on Good to be here. Welcome to Brit Bowl 33, everyone. An exciting day ahead. So, let's just run through the structure of American football in the UK. You may be an NFL fan, but you may have very little knowledge about the game in the United Kingdom. So, Carl, just run through a little bit about how the, the game is structured over here. Yeah, great to be with you. So, we have uh, a number of different ways you can get involved in the game of American football. And this is obviously, Brit Bowl 33 is the highlight of the season. So, every year we come together and we have these big games in a stadium across the country. This time it's New River Stadium here in London. And today, what we're going to be seeing is the first game we'll be seeing up this morning that kicks off at midday is 
is the junior game. The junior game is under 19s. They play nine aside football, fully kitted football. And you've got two of the best teams in the country here the East Kilbride Pirates and the London Blitz, who will be playing each other. And they have a long history and a long rivalry. So it's going to be a fantastic game. The second game today is the adult national premiership final. So this is the elite. This, this is the best of the best in the UK. And we're having the London Warriors, who really are a tremendous outfit, a great team to watch. Uh, they've played in Europe. They've, they've dominated UK football for a number of years now. And they'll be playing the plucky Tamworth Phoenix from the north, who took the title two years ago and are always there and thereabouts. So we've got the adult league this afternoon, which will be the jewel in the crown, if you like, of the British American Football Association, and then the junior game. But there's some other tiers as well. So Tash, do you want to talk a little bit about the ladies game if you're a lady watching welcome you can get involved as well yeah so with the women's game it's actually developed tremendously over the last couple of years so originally women's probably two years ago were only playing five a side and then um, the women's game game grew so much that They've now got a division specifically for seven aside and then a development division for the five aside teams. We're hoping that next season we might even be at that step to jump up to nines like the juniors yeah. and then eventually one day get to that 11s level because when you look at um, outfits like the Birmingham Lions women team who are the current national champions for the women's game, um, they've actually gone over to Finland to play 11s so we are starting to see more and more development um so if you are looking to get involved in the women's game definitely see if there is a team close or at least in a distance to travel to within the last couple of weeks as well the uh, british american football association hosted the women's european championships up in leeds and great britain women were part of that competition along with finland sweden and austria and that was a fantastic event Carl, and a great promotion of the women's game in this country yeah, the IFAF European Championships was, uh, took place. There were four teams in it. There was a Great Britain team, there was a Finnish team, a Swedish team, and an Austrian team. They all played each other, and it was a tabular format, and then whoever won out was uh, the top of the table, won the European Championship. In the end, it came down to a fantastic battle between Great Britain and Finland, with Great Britain actually winning the game, but not doing enough on points to win the championship. Nevertheless, very exciting, and it was run over a week in Leeds. We were there, and uh, we enjoyed thoroughly uh, bringing that coverage uh, to as many people as we could. So the ladies game really taking off. That was 11 aside, and what we're talking about is kitted football for ladies. So it's uh, really exciting to see that taking off. Lots of other opportunities to get involved in this country, though, right from early cadet level up the way to the juniors and then through Divisions 2, Divisions 1. Most teams start off in this country as associate members, which basically gives them an opportunity to establish themselves before they go into full league play. But the game is particularly growing in this country with the help of the NFL, and obviously the London games, at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and Wembley, four games again this year. So the game is as big as it's ever been. And actually, this is the first time that the BBC has covered um, British American football and been able to stream it. So we're very proud to be able to bring that to you today. So, let's move on to today's action. As I mentioned yesterday, saw Division 2 South final, where the South Wales Warriors were victorious, uh, and also the Division 1 final, where the Solent Thrashers defeated the Samuel Steelers to take that Division 1 crown. All four of the teams involved yesterday have already been promoted to their next league up, so they were playing for just that cherry on the, on the cake yesterday. Today, we turn our attention to the under-19s, and then later on, as we've mentioned, that premiership game. So, we'll start discussing a little bit that under-19 game. Kickoff is 12 o'clock in around 25 minutes' time. Time. We've got the East Kilbride Pirates taking on the London Blitz. Obviously, a big journey for East Kilbride, not so much for the Blitz. And we're going to talk about the Blitz first as they are our home team. So, Carl, the London Blitz Juniors, obviously um, a very well-established outfit, both from a British point of view, but also an under-19 point of view. Talk through their season a little bit. Well, the London Blitz have been around for a, a long time now. They have a program which includes a youth team, a junior team, and a senior team, and their junior team's been dominant in British American football for a number of years now. They've just had a fantastic season. If you look at the stats, they're 6-0, and which means they've won six, lost none. They scored 217 points, on the, so that's about 31 points a game. So that's dominant play. But the real surprise, the, bear in mind this is nine-a-side football, so there's only nine players on each of the field. Uh, their defense has only conceded one single touchdown the entire season, less than a point a game if you average that out. So that is hugely dominant. And from speaking to their head coach earlier on, um, that was on the last play of a particular game when the game was won, and they were a little disappointed to concede that. But yeah, so the Blitz are, you know, they've, they've got it all everywhere. Offense, defense, special teams, they are going to bring a lot of problems for East Kilbride. Yeah, absolutely. They have a highly uh, skilled running attack. They have big running backs. They're able to rotate three or four different running backs into that place, uh, into that backfield. They have th in nine-a-side football, you play three offensive linemen. 
So you can't do a lot of sophisticated stuff with you would with five offensive linemen, but what you can do, they do very effectively, and we'll see that today as the game progresses. London Blitz very strong on the run. Absolutely. We are joined today, and we were yesterday, by the guys from X and O's who are just behind us. They run a, a podcast each and every week um, about the British game, and it's been really successful running for about seven months now. Um, we managed to get you interviews with coaches, and that's probably pretty standard for what we try and do here with Onside Productions. Uh, and as a result, we've got a really full package. During the day today, the X and O's guys are going to be bringing you live podcast they're going to bring you interviews all throughout the show we have a halftime show we'll bring you reaction at the end of the day but before we go any further we're going to hand over to the those guys who managed to get in touch with a couple of the players shortly before we went on air yo 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 welcome back to Britball 33 it's your boy mr selenke and i'm joined by the future of the london blitz number two their quarterback marco how are you i'm good i'm a little bit nervous but i'm sure that will go away as kickoff starts and then we'll get the game on the way and just do what we do best. There you go, I love that. Nothing to be nervous about, though. You're in the final. You've you know, worked hard to get here. And what are you looking forward to the, to the most? And why are you not actually nervous? Oh, uh, I'm nervous before every game. Just, I guess it's just the competitiveness in yeah. the game. And they're a very good opponent as well. Yeah. So definitely not to be underestimated. Yeah. But, I mean, all we can do is play our best and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. How many TDs are you going to throw for today? Hoping for six. I feel like that's a that's a good goal. Yeah? Yeah. Fair enough. And lastly, before you go, is anyone you want to shout out? You're on the BBC now, boy. Yeah, I just want to shout out my mum because <laughs> she gives me like loads of support yep. in everything I do. Yep. So, yeah, that's the only person. Fair enough. Thank you very much for your time and good luck. Best of luck for the game. So it's great to be able to bring you interviews with players, but not only players, we managed to get access to the coaching staff as well. And I caught up earlier on with offensive coordinator uh, of the London Blitz, who shared his thoughts with us on today's game. I'm joined by offensive coordinator of the London Blitz, Chris Swan. Thanks for joining us, Chris. You're welcome. It's, it's a very exciting day. It's a lovely sunny day down here in London, and uh, we've got a lot to look forward to this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, talk about the Blitz. Uh, first of all, perfect season this year. Um, put most opponents to the sword, and obviously in the championship game, you were successful as well. Talk us through this season a little bit. It's been a strange one. Um, I think every year... Uh, just like every other junior team in this country with the age ranges that we have it's very hard to really know who we're going to have the next season with sort of player turnover so every off season we sit down as a coaching staff and we decide who we've got and then from there we decide what kind of team we're going to be uh, we're, not, we're not a coaching staff that's going to think about sticking to a certain scheme just because that's how we go as coaches it's, it's let's fit the players so we came in with once again another new identity like we do every year both on offence and defence and it's <laughs> so far it seems to have worked um, it's, been a, it's been a year where we've had a few ups and downs um, there have been games where we've won by quite a few but we haven't really played so well there's been games where we've won close games where we've had to dig deep so we've shown character we've shown ruthlessness and we've shown desire and I think it's sort of taken us all the way to here well, looking down your schedule and the results, there's only one game where you've conceded any points against the Thames Valley Tigers, and then that was only six, and the yep. 42 you put up against them. Mm -hmm. um, is that a reflection of the strength of the Blitz, or is it a reflection of that particular division? I think it's a, I think it's a little bit both. I'm not going to say that um, there are teams in our division that are world beaters. So I think it'd be, I think even some of the other teams would be fair to say that. But we've, we've come up against some very good teams: Kent, London Warriors. I mean, Solent, we only beat 12-0. There's some very good teams in our division, but it just shows you as I said we've only given up six points during the season and that was on the very last play of the game and we were not happy that we came out of that game thinking we'd lost you know to give up that to finally give up a touchdown was not a good feeling for us so yeah it's, it shows just how good our defense is it shows that you know what so so long as we're at keeping other teams on the field we're confident they're not going to score and then we can go out there and do the business on offense I usually ask the question about is a team based around offense defense special teams again looking down here you could argue either case you're putting up close to 50 points in most games you're conceding very little mm -hmm. is there a driving force in the blitz or is it very balanced the driving force is the team as a whole um, with, and again, um, as you'll see by the, the size of our team, we're not precious about players playing one way. Every single player trains at, pl uh, trains at two positions, both offense and defense. So all of a sudden we go from a roster size of 25 to a roster size of 50 based on their skill set. So there's no driving force behind it. It's a good job by the coaches to get kids ready. If they need to go in, they go in and they're not lost. Okay. So yes, our defense is playing very well. Yes, our offense seems to be now being able to score at will, but I would say as a whole, we're a very good team. So turn our attention to today's matchup, and you've got the East Kilbride Pirates, obviously down here in London. So mm -hmm. travel for them has been an issue, and not so much for you. You've had some good battles against them over the years. Yeah. What do you expect from this this uh, Pirates team today, and how are you going to approach it? They're very well drilled. 
They're very well drilled from, from what we've seen on tape, which hasn't been loads, but what, what we've seen on tape, they're very well drilled. They don't give up their assignments very much. They uh, execute at a high rate. So we know it's going to be um, tough early on. Um, we know that we just got to be patient. If they, if they score a touchdown, if they get some yards, just accept it. They're a good team. They're, they're, they're in the final for a reason. So, so are we. You know, so we've got to go out there and do, and do our own thing. Let's not get caught up in what they do. And I uh, hope it should be a good game. And finally, you obviously said the team is all important and that's the balance. Are there any individuals that you would look out for today or is it very much going to be a sort of let's mix it up as much as we can? We're going to try and mix up as much as we can. Um, yes, oh, I think it's very well known that we're very much a running team first. Um, last time we played it, it was all in the back of Aaron Mahoney-Jones. This year, we've got four or five running backs that we're going to rotate very high, get them all reps, get them moving side to side. Um, Defensively, it's just littered with really good players. Um, it's something that we can't, um, can't, can't deny. We've got studs, front, middle and back. You know, it's, it's going to be a team effort. Well, I know kickoff is fast approaching, so I won't keep you from your Thank preparations you too much. much longer. Thanks for Cheers. your time and good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. And I think uh, Chris Swan, their offensive coordinator, did allude to the fact that they are packed with stud players. And a couple of the scores you're going to put out there, Carl, just highlight that fact. Yeah, well, just to give you an idea of the, some of the, the, the scores they put up. 52 nothing against the Cambridge Air Cats. Uh, 42-6 against Thames Valley Tigers. That was what Tash was talking about, that touchdown coming in late, that they were disappointed that they let in. And then in the playoffs... Uh, London Blitz beat their crosstown rivals, the London Warriors, 43-6 to to bring them into this game. So very impressive defensively and able to put up a lot of scores as well. And we can now just pull up to the stands where the X and O's guys are interviewing a various amount of people up there. <laughs> um, how are you today? Fine, delighted to be here, this beautiful weather. That's great. I um, wanted to know, what do you think about this presentation of Britball today? Well, it's our first time here and it's absolutely the most exciting thing to be part of. So we're all really looking forward to it. It's a beautiful stadium and it's been great getting here. Looking forward to it. Got you, that's amazing. Uh, also, the big question of the day, who are you for? Go Pirates. <laughs> EKP fans? Yeah, definitely, all the way from Scotland, East Coast Pride, yep. Got it, amazing. Um, and lastly, um, what do you who do you think is going to score the first touchdown? Pirates. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been great catching up with you Thank today, you. and uh, hope you enjoy the game. Yeah, you too. All right, take Thank care. You. I'm going to move on, catching a couple more beeps. Ooh. Hey, people. Hey there, guys. You well? Um, not too bad. Um, how are you? Very well, thank you. Amazing. Um, so literally, we're just trying to catch up with people all around the stadium, wanted to know, what do you think about this presentation of Britball here today? I think it's very good. I think it's excellent that it's been streamed live so that more people can see it. It's more exposure for the game. Yep. Got it, got it. Amazing. Uh, also, I wanted to know, big question of the day, who are you for? Oh, I think that would be fairly easy. East Kilbride <laughs> Pirates. Got you, got you. Seems we've seems we got a lot of East EKP guys in the stadium today. Um, and lastly, uh, who do you think is going to score the first touchdown? East Kilbride are going to run back the opening kickoff. <laughs> awesome, awesome, great. Thanks for your time. It's been good to catch up with you. You have a good game. Thank you, you too. All right, okay. So let's turn our attention then to the East Kilbride Pirates. Long journey down here from north of the border, but they bring a very strong, very well drilled squad down here, Cole. They're doing for, for me, it's all about their head coach, Matthew Spoony Davis, as he's known. Uh, he's been around British American football for a long time. He's been a mainstay of East Kilbride. This is his last game. He's retiring after this game. But he's been coaching this junior squad for some time, and we'll bring you the interview a little bit later. But, yeah, they've not had such a dominant season as the London Blitz. In fact, it's one of the youngest teams the East Kilbride Pirates have ever had in their history. But, nevertheless, although they are young, they're resilient, they're strong, and they've put some good scores up against some good teams up in the north and they finally made it to another Brit Bowl. They've been here four times and they've never won and so this could be a, a fairy tale story for them and you can see from who's, who's arrived early in the stands uh, that our exes and those colleagues could come and, and interview it's the East Kilbride Pirates fans. They have a very strong fan base. They travel very well. We expect them to make lots of noise today as well. Nice for a final as well Tash. Scotland versus England. 
adds a little bit of an extra edge to things. <laughs> it does. I think it's one of those where when you've had two teams that have faced each other so many times in a final, you know it's going to be a good final. And it normally is with these two teams, a constant battle for who is going to get either the first touchdown or who's going to get constant touchdowns. And I think that um, seeing the seeing the talent that is coming through East Kilbride and like what we were saying, like the London Blitz, they have those those levels so they have the junior they have the under 19 they have um the adult team and then on top of that they've got their women's team as well um so they have a lot of development areas which is great so let's focus in a little bit on ekp season so far yep. uh, standings wise they've been successful and then obviously they've made it here by defeating the birmingham lions in the semi-final call yeah, they're, they're six and zero. Oh. The the score lines are not as dominant as London Blitz, but then no one's as dominant as London Blitz in the junior game currently. But some of the scores for you, they beat uh, the Highland Wildcats early on, forty two to twenty. Then they seem to get more and more confident as they went, beating Yorkshire Academy Assassins. That's a good side, forty six to eight. Chorley Buccaneers was a closer one, thirty six to twenty eight. Working their way all the way up to that Birmingham Lions game, which was a very close game. It required a, a goal line stand in the end to kind of turn the Lions away. They only won that game thirteen to nine. Birmingham Lions, another very strong program with good links to university and GB football so lots of good programs on show this weekend and East Kilbride right up there with them and they're the ones that come to represent the under 19s from the north so a successful season for them and we'll see how they perform against a very strong blitz team and we could have a contrasting styles here the London Blitz known for a very run heavy offense whereas East Kilbride like to air it out they like to go through to the passing attack to try and uh, gain their yards yeah, definitely. Um, I think that the best thing that we can do right now is actually hear from the coach, which uh, you, Carl, spoke to earlier. Yeah, it was a great interview. Let's hear now from uh, Matthew Davis, who's the head coach of the East Kilbride Pirates, his last game in charge. Let's hear from him now. And I'm here with head coach Matthew Spoonie Davis. Welcome to London, Matt, all the way from East Kilbride today. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having us. It's great to have you here. Let's talk about your season, first of all. Unbeaten East Kilbride Pirates coming into this game in London. Tell us about your season so far. So we've got the youngest squad we've ever had at our junior team by six, on average, six months younger than any team we've had. So this is my final year in charge, and I expected we would maybe go, maybe squeeze four and two, something like that, have a good season, hand the team over to Nicky in great shape, and they'd make a playoff run uh, next year. But the, the young guys proved to be much more resilient uh, and much more willing to prepare than we'd expected. And so here we are, six and zero. Oh. So we had two tough games against Manchester Titans. They're always uh, they're always great encounters. Two tough games against the Highland Wildcats, the kind of forgotten team of the of the North who are always a great opponent to play those both went really well we had a game against Leeds and a great game against Chorley who who just about uh, did a number on us as well so we've had a few a few scares along the way but we got out 6-0 and and then into the playoffs and who are the players that are really standing out and helping you along with these performances well our run game this year has been a massive feature so last year we were built and the year before really we were built on the pass game that was our big focus because those were our guys that we had that were kind of coming towards the kind of peak of their careers but those guys have stepped up um, to the senior team and they're making an impact there so it's really built on the run game so we've got five running backs that will rotate between we've got Jack Cochran, Rory Hutton uh, we've got Robbie McGregor and then the Matt, the Matt Black and Greg Black, the Black Twins whose birthday it is today uh, and those guys have been brilliant an offensive line uh, led by Michael Gervin at left guard has been fantastic so that's really been the core of our offence and then defensively we've got guys like Ben Gallagher GB captain at linebacker who's been excellent um, guys like Eli and, and Ben Hewitt on the defensive line and then Ronan Haddo and, uh, and Ethan Stewart at DB have been brilliant for us as well so. Excellent and you had a close victory against Birmingham Lions to make your way to this final 13 to 9 tell us about that game well Birmingham I think would tell you that they didn't have a particularly strong season again they had a really young squad and they rebuilt from being out the league last year and so I think they surprised themselves by making it to the playoffs but the, the the Birmingham we saw on film and the Birmingham we saw on the day were two very different teams and I think our guys uh, had a combination of maybe being a little bit complacent and I think also potentially being um, a little bit overwhelmed by the occasion we had 300 fans at our home location which is the biggest crowd the guys have ever played in front of and I think we uh, we let that get the better of us so we started strongly scored early on and um, got a couple of scores ahead and then things started to unravel a little bit a lot of mistakes and poor execution and Birmingham were very consistent their running back number nine was just solid all day and they, they, they squeezed their way back into it and it took a goal line stand on uh, fourth down to, to save the, the touchdown then we conceded a safety right at the very end but our kicker Ben Hewitt managed to pin them deep and then they'd run out of timeouts and we managed to squeak our way past so it was a lot closer than we would have liked but good for the paying fans excellent well done and then three years out of four you've been down in the final yeah uh, but you've never won a final so 
What's the di what's going to be make the difference today uh, in winning this final? It's a good question. It's one I've been asked a few times this week. I think I mean our four years have been e exceptional in terms of the, the success. We've gone twenty two one and one in the regular season over those four years, and we're now four and three in the playoffs. Um, I think the difference this year, as I say, is the resilience. Last year was a funny one because we probably had the most talented team we'd had at junior, but they just lacked that resilience and that grit to get over the line, and that's why we we kind of fell short in the semis and then won the plate. So you know I don't know. I mean I guess the big thing is. One of the things with, with this football is the same as you'll see in the Premier Final. Until they get to the playoffs, there's no cross-conference. So the Blitz have gone 6-0, and demolished everybody, only conceded six points. But we've had some very tough games, and I have no idea what the calibre of their opposition has been like. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how the two teams match up. They're fast, athletic, as always, so we know we're going to have a game in our hands. But I'm really looking forward to it. This is why you do it. You do it to play great teams. You know, Beating teams that you're 40 points ahead of at halftime doesn't teach you anything. These are the ones that really matter. So. And talking about games that really matter. This is going to be the last game for you. You're retiring as head coach of EKP. You've been a mainstay of American football community for a lot of years. I see you around all the time. Always good to speak to you and catch up with you. What's next for you? Well, I've been with the Pirates for 14 years. I've been in the sport for 18 seasons between coaching at university and playing at university and then senior and now junior. Um, spent three years with the GB programme under Mike Callan, supporting those guys as a GA. Um, I've, I've done an awful lot in the sport and I've loved it, but I live in Edinburgh and travel through to East Coast bride twice a week and have done for 13 of the 14 years and it's a lot of travel and a lot of time commitment and I've got a four-year-old daughter who you'll see today she's come down she was in the London Aquarium yesterday on tour enjoying herself so um, she's going to be here and spending time with her is a priority I've got a little side business I do some speaking gigs uh, some speaker training some leadership coaching and stuff I want to push a little bit harder outside of my work and just spend time with family you know I'll still be involved with the game I've got some guys that I kind of support um, in a sort of mentorship capacity around the UK I'll still be catching with those guys like Bryce up at our Dean, I'll be up involved with their camp. I'm going to be helping our women's team out later this year. So loads of things going on. I'll, I'll certainly, I'll not be, uh, I'll not be shy of work. And then, you know, after a year out, we'll see how I feel and what happens next. Well, congratulations on a fantastic career. Whatever you choose to do next, um, I'm glad that you're still going to be around. As lots of people watching this, that will be. And, and very best wishes for today. We hope you get that win. Uh, we'll be watching closely to see how EKP do in the game. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for all the work you guys are doing for the sport. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Matthew Davis, head coach of EKP. Welcome back. It is Brit Bowl 33 and we have just had the national anthem. So I'm going to be passing you up to Matt Walker and Carl Walkinshaw for your commentators for today's under 19s final. Thank you very much, Tash. Great to be back in the booth, Carl, for day two. Matt Walker here alongside Carl Walkinshaw bringing you all the action from day two of Brit Bowl 33 here live from New River Stadium in the nation's capital. Carl, looking forward to another good day of football here. This is the jewel in the crown of the British American football season. So if you've not seen British American football before, you're in for an absolute treat. We have got the London Blitz against the East Kilbride Pirates in the under-19 game. And uh, later on, we've got the absolute pinnacle of British American football with two elite teams coming, London Warriors and the Tamworth Phoenix. But this one is going to be a good one as the players come out to the centre of the field for the coin toss, Matt. So if you are joining us for the first time, we are streaming on YouTube, on Facebook, on our normal channels. But we're also streaming on the BBC Sport website this afternoon, this morning and this afternoon. So if you're new to the game, if you're just found your way onto American football and have never seen anything before. If you're an NFL fan and don't know very much about the British game, we'll try and give you a few tips and pointers as the afternoon goes on. But yes, our coin toss being conducted by our referee David Knight this afternoon, who is okay, leading I've the ordinary charge. Here we go. Her Majesty, the Queen is the head. The, the line is the tail. As a visiting captain, I'll ask you to call, but I'll ask you to call before I throw it in here. Heads is called. And it is a head, so you've won the top. Would you like to receive the ball? You'd like to receive the ball, okay. Which end would you like to kick from here? You want to kick from that and go in this way? Yep, yeah, okay. If you turn with your back to the goal, you would like to, uh, will you be defending? Okay. He's killed by won the toss and elected to receive. So there we go, as you heard from referee David Knight, East Kilbride did win the toss and will be receiving the football in the first half. Um, just to remind you, this is nine-a-side football at under-19 level, so still playing on the full-size pitch, which means there are much more wide-open spaces to exploit here, Cole. 
Yeah, and that's what's been so impressive about this London Blitz defence that we're going to see as they come out onto the field. They've only conceded one touchdown the entire season, despite this being nine-a-side football. That means you've got nine players to cover a full-side field, Matt, which is incredible, and they've only let one touchdown in. We'll see how East Kilbride come out and run the ball. It was an interesting decision that they won the toss and they said, right, we're going to put our offence on the field first. That shows some confidence in this running offence that EKP have. And we'll see them come out and try and make some erosion into this great London Blitz defence. It's going to be an interesting uh, battle to start with. Remember, it's nine aside American football, so what you've got is a situation where there are, we don't play with tackles. So if you're used to watching American football 11 aside, you'll notice when the teams come out and play offense, there will be no offensive tackles and therefore only two or three defensive linemen as well. But that's the only difference. You can blitz as many players as you would like. You can uh, run any, any uh, pass play or any run play that you would like. You just don't have those additional offensive linemen or D linemen. Little bit of a delay here while uh, the London Blitz sideline, who are the home team here this afternoon, while the London Blitz sideline are getting themselves ready. Equally, referees just hold in for our 12 o'clock midday kickoff. It's currently 11.57 here. So let's um, just have a little think about this one. There's a, both teams have got a number of players who have bowl experience. EKP and the London Blitz have been involved in this particular tournament for a, a number of years and we'll run through as we go but there are players from both teams who look to forward their career their future in the British game and beyond the London Blitz themselves um, have the DSA program the DSA Academy and uh, they're already sending athletes out to the USA to date, people all over me have a long list that I may well be able to mention as we go on. But before we do that, worth mentioning that uh, these games don't go ahead without the support from BAFRA, the British American Football Referees Association. And I mentioned referee David Knight already, who's going to be leading this one. He's joined on his crew by umpire Richard Moger, headlines from Richard, Roger Goodgroves, line judge Liam Wooten, back judge Amir Brooks, field judge Alan Christopher, and side judge Daniel Holt. And those guys will be ensuring that all is fair for for this afternoon's game. So we are all set to kick off. Back deep to receive for East Kilbride is Rory Hutton, part of the 2018 under-19 plate winning championship team for the Pirates. And we are underway and a cheeky little kick into space which sails out of bounds. And as it sails out of bounds, that's where play will begin from although the flag has come out because if you are new to the game that ball must stay in bounds as on the kickoff otherwise you as the kicking team will receive a penalty and here is our referee David Knight legal procedure free kick out of bounds on the kicking team five yard penalty first down so illegal procedure basically means that they have, obviously, they've transgressed the rules. They're not allowed to kick the ball straight out of play on the kickoff. And now they will start first down and 10 on their own 38-yard line. Now, I'm going to run through, Carl, intricacies and basics of the game. If you are new to the sport, each team, when they're on offense, they have four attempts to move the ball 10 yards down the field. They can do this by either handing the ball off to a running back or they can do it by throwing the ball through the air to a receiver. If they're successful in gaining those 10 yards, they get another 10 yards. As on first down, the ball is handed off at the middle, and there's a big gap at the middle for that East Kilbride running back. And as you see there, he has gone past that orange marker on the far side of your screen, which means he will have another first down. So, running back there, number 30 for the Pirates. That's Greg Black. So again, first down and 10 Pirates. Black once again receives a handoff and he has a big hole over the left hand side, the right left hand side of the line. He gets past the mark for another first down. Carl Walkinshaw. Very surprising, isn't it? Two first downs straight away for this East Kilbride's Pirates offense. They're moving quickly, they're running the ball well, they're creating gaps on this defensive line for the London Blitz. The Blitz now need to rally and make an adjustment as they put seven in the blocks. Oh, nearly jump in the snap there, but Black manages to elude that blitzing defender and picks up three yards. That will be second down, which means their second attempt, and they now need seven more yards to gain that first ten. So if they manage to gain these seven yards they'll get another first down so second and seven for the Pirates good opening drive so far for the men from north of the border 
Little delay as the quarterback adjusts his plan and he goes back to pass. And he's got a man and he hits that receiver, Scott McKiggan, the quarterback. Hits yeah. that. Sorry, Cole. Christian Rubuga on the reception. Yeah, so this East Kilbride, they're not huddling up. They're moving very, very quickly. We're trying to bring you the play-by-play -play as we go. But East Kilbride moving down the field very quickly. Now gone 25 yards and more to come, we think. So third and six. Six yards needed to get another first down. The ball's handed off, and it's Black again. And Black at this time caught in the backfield by number 26, which is Keenan Diobi. And that will mean that will bring up fourth down. So again, for the uninitiated, fourth down. This is their final attempt, and they need to gain five yards to get to that orange marker that you can see at the top of your screen. If they manage to gain those four or five yards, they will get another four opportunities to move the ball again. If they fail on this fourth down, then the blitz will take the football over. So McKigan at quarterback once again. He's got a running back to his left, and he's going to the air. McKigan looks on the slant, and that's in and out of the hands of the defensive back, and that defensive back is Matteo McDowell and because East Kilbride runs successful on that fourth down play you see a change of teams and the blitz will take the offense for the first time nice play by East Kilbride even though they didn't convert on that fourth down they drive from their own 35 yard line all the way to the London blitz 25 and against a strong defense like the blitz that was very impressive by EKP they will take heart in that but their defense now has to step up and stop the London blitz so they can get the ball back so here we go then, first down for the Blitz and their high-powered offense. First down as the quarterback hands off. He hands off to Temi Fagbemi. And he's on his feet and being wrestled to the sideline. But look at the strength by the running back. And on the tackle there is Ben Gallagher, number 50 for the Pirates. They have athletes all over the field, this London Blitz team. That was an excellent run by Timmy Fagbima, and he's going to be a feature back for them, although they can rotate three or four different running backs into this lineup. So they start well on the run as well. Both these teams now getting that run game going early in this first quarter. Marco Livy at quarterback for the Blitz. Second down, three yards to go. Livy goes to the air, and he lost that just over the head of the intended receiver, who is Tunde Ganyu. Nice play that time by Ben Hewitt, who's the linebacker, just came in, put his hands up and just got in the quarterback's throwing lane, made that very difficult to complete. So good job by Ben Hewitt on that one for EKP. So you can see at the top of your screen now that number three, just where the official is. There it is, that number three. They, it's third down, their third opportunity. They need three yards to pick up another first down. Libby hands the ball off, and this time it's Lennox Osebini. And Lennox gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. Great job of Ben Gallagher coming in and filling that gap. They play the edge really well on that play to EKP with Ben Hewitt taking on that initial block and then Gallagher coming in and filling the gap to pull them down and hold this London Blitz to fourth down. EKP certainly come here to play. They've travelled a long way and they're not going to be rolled over. Now again, apologies if you are a seasoned veteran of football in general or British football, but it's fourth down now and you can see the number 19 has come on. Israel Akano has come on for the Blitz and he's going to kick this one away and the reason for that is he doesn't want the East Kilbride Pirates taking the ball over so close in the Blitz territory. And that's a high hanging kick. So what that will mean is wherever that ball comes to rest and it takes a big London Blitz bounce, and it's still rolling inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. And that is where the East Kilbride Pirates will start their next drive. Both teams feeling each other out at the minute, Carl. Yeah, both teams had a little bit of success in the running game, but then those defenses really stepping up and defending well when it came into that, uh, the other opponent's half. EKP just got the edge at the moment with two really good runs and got a deep run all the way to the 25 yard line of the London Blitz. So let's see whether they can start where they ended last time and get that running game going on this series of downs. So McKigan and the EKP offense back to work. Three receivers and he drops back to pass and he's got a man down the middle and just overthrows his intended receiver who is Christian Rubuga. We pronounced his name earlier on. A lot of these uh, players themselves Scott McKigan, quarterback, part of the under-17 under Brit Bowl winning team in 2016 and part of that 2018 
plate winning squad. So lots of experience of silverware. There's McKigan on second and ten. Surveys the field and it's a bad snap and this one is loose. It's anybody still and it's still squirting around and it appears that the blitz have fallen on it and a disaster early on for the Kil East Kilbride offense. It was just a bungled snap wasn't it and uh, they, they were sending a blitz and it's Alex Greenhag that comes through for the London blitz to finally get that ball for the blitz but it was a scrabble down there at the bottom of the pile to see who would come up with it. London Blitz putting the pressure on EKP early and get that turnover and that's a disaster for EKP. That defense is going to have to step up and defend that goal line tenaciously now. The Blitz seem to be trying to jump that snap count so maybe Spoonie, Matthew Davis, head coach of the Pirates, might want to consider just delaying them with alterations but anyway, ball is handed off and once again it is Osai Bini who gets the handoff, picks up two or three yards, it'll be second and seven. And again, a good tackle coming in from Ben Gallagher, that uh, GB under-19 captain. And he's uh, made two critical tackles, just holding the runner there for two yards. So EKP now with uh, second and six to defend. Well, second and eight actually, Cole. So pick up with two on first down for the Blitz. And here's Livy again at quarterback. Two running backs either side of him. He drops back to pass and he puts the ball up. He's got a receiver there. And that is well defended by number 20, Ethan Stewart for the Pirates. Always a bit of a, a risky move as a defensive back when you don't get your head around. Carl looking for the football. You can be called for a penalty if you're not careful. But Stewart on that one played it very well. Yeah, incomplete. It's going to bring up a third and long situation now for the Blitz. And it means that... Let's see what they do, whether they stick with that running attack with two backs to either side of the quarterback or they do something through the air. McKigan hands the ball off this side and the running back makes a beautiful move and that's Fagmemi again, but corralled after a pickup of a yard and that'll bring up fourth down for the blitz. So with a short field, which basically means that the East Kilbride Pirates haven't got a lot of room before the blitz score, a short field, They're, the Pirates defending very, very well. But Carl, you know as a defensive coordinator, if you've not got a lot of field to defend, it makes it a little easier. Yeah, it's nine-a-side football, so there is space on the field for these teams, but I'm impressed so far by EKP's plays on the edge. McKigan back to the area, has a man in the back of the end zone, it's caught! One foot down in the field of play, and that is the first score of the afternoon. Number 84, Leonardo Sophocles. Great reception, lovely pass by Livy. Drifted the ball over the top of the defender, and Sophocles manages to haul that one in. One foot in the field of play after he's made the reception. That's all you need in this game, and that is 6-0 Blitz. And that's how quickly the Blitz can strike. They run the ball, they run the ball, and then they go to the air, and they have the athlete Sophocles to come in and make that catch. The back of the end zone, really nice play. So, the extra point attempt is up and it's blocked. Number 74 for the Pirates has that ball land in his hand, Stephen Murdoch. And Murdoch just trundles that one out of play. But, basically, as a result of that blocked extra point, the Blitz will kick off once again. And we have our first score of the afternoon. Good stuff from these two teams, Carl, early on. Yeah, it's a ding-dong battle so far. It's just that turnover. You'll see on the replay here, the quick feet of Sophocles managing to keep his two feet in bounds and uh, a great haul in. But both teams coming out playing good football. It's just that turnover that makes the difference. And it means that that short field, they can go a couple of runs and then into the end zone on fourth down. So a gutsy play call by the Blitz and they take the early lead in this one. So Sophocles with that first touchdown of the afternoon. This is the under-19 British final between the London Blitz and the East Kilbride Pirates. Part of Brit Bowl 33 weekend here as the ball is fumbled on the kickoff and manages to retain it, does the returner. And then he is flattened just inside, just outside the 15-yard line. Christian Rubuga again with return duties and the Pirates will take over once again. 398 miles these Pirates have had to travel down for this weekend, Carl, compared with the Blitz who maybe haven't had to go much further than five or six miles. Yeah, they just got their oyster card out and jumped on the tube to come down here, but uh, East Kilbride having to travel a long way. But we've got a, a big turnout from the East Kilbride fans. I would say there's more EKP fans here than London. So, back to the air, and that's a blitz coming, and he's sacked. That's Keenan Diobi once again taking down McKigan. 
And now the nerves are starting to show for the Pirates and this dominant blitz defense. We mentioned that uh, offensive coordinator for the blitz who we spoke to earlier on, Chris Swan, mentioned about this team being packed full of studs, Carl. Yeah, they're certainly turning up. They're named, they're called the Blitz for a reason. They like to send pressure and they're sending heavy pressure off the edge and in the middle, putting East Kilbride under all sorts of pressure. Second and 18 upcoming. The boys handed off this time and the runner has a lane and he picks up positive yardage. That's Rory Hutton on the carry. Keenan Diaby having to track back from that outside linebacker position to make the tackle on that one. When they get past that first initial line of scrimmage, EKP are making yards. It's whether they can beat the blitz at that point of attack. Third down, 13, 14 yards to pick up for McKiggan. And he drops back and passes, and that pass is a little bit nervy. Had a lot of pressure on him once again from that blitz defensive front. And it will force the East Kilbride Pirates to kick the ball away to the London Blitz. The strategy is obviously going to be with both of these teams. On first and second down, they're going to want to run the ball and get into manageable third down situations. If you're in third and 10, or you're in third and more than that, 12 to 15 yards, you're in a third and long situation, then you're moving away from your offensive strength, which is that running attack. So it means that they have to go to the air, and that's not going to be successful. So let's have a see what they can do on this punt. So here we go, trying to clear their lines as it were, and he's in trouble, another big pressure from the Blitz special teams unit, and they're going to have fantastic field position once again, but the ball does roll kindly for the Pirates, out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, call it the 33, and the Blitz offense led by Marco Livy come back to work again, and at 6-0 down, you know, the Pirates are still in it. If they put another score on the board here on this drive, it's going to start being very difficult for the Pirates to claw their way back off. And the problem is field position. For those of you new to American football, field position is such an important part of this game. You can see that London Blitz are already starting this drive in the EKP half. Two running backs on this one, and the a beautiful jump step to his right. And now he looks to try and turn the corner, but Fagbemi is stopped, and he stopped viciously by Ronan Haddow. Really nice pursuit there by Ronan Haddow because we know these London Blitz running backs can run, but Haddow tracks him down, tracks that near side hip and makes a nice tackle in the open field to deny him any yards. In fact, push him back a yard, so it brings up second and 11 for this Blitz team. Great start for the Pirates on this drive. We talk about being in front or behind of the chains. The chains are between those two orange markers that you will see uh, there at the top of your screen. McKiggan now looks to pass but then decides to tuck the ball and run himself tries to spin he loses two tacklers but then Jack Cochran along with Ben Gallagher coming in on the tackle there for EKP as well that quarterback's very shifty uh, Marco Livy but uh, EKP denying him any more yards, only got three. So Marco Livy acting is almost like an additional running back on that play. But some good defense to drag him down. Brings up a third and medium. Let's see how the Blitz play this one. Apologies, Mark, uh, Kate McKiggan hasn't switched to the London side. It is Livy on and hands the ball off to Osei Binney, who picks up good yardage. He looks like he's going to have enough for a first down. So Livy and the Blitz offense continue to roll. EKP would have wanted to do more on that play third and medium third and long situations for a defense you really want to get them into a fourth down situation especially where the blitz are they're driving now very close to the red zone which is we call the red zone 20 yards and in so handoff once again there's a flag comes out and it looks like Fagbemi is going to go in for six but from where that flag is thrown and a flag is the yellow duster or hanky that you can see and you will see shortly in the middle of the field the likelihood of that is that's going to be holding against the London Blitz and it looks like number 58 Jamie Bell is guilty here and listen to our referee holding on the offense number 58 10 yard penalty first down I thought there was a big hole on that side of the field, Matt, and it turns out that there was, but it was caused by a hold, an illegal holding of a defensive player means that that play will be run back. It'll be a 10-yard penalty against the London Blitz, and it will be first and 20. Just need to apologise. We understand there may well be a bit of a picture issue if you're watching on the BBC Sport website. Um, 
but we are aware of that and obviously trying to get that sorted as soon as we can. So living in the offense, first and 18, as this ball is handed off to a new runner. That's Nicholas Dolbaya. And Dolbaya picks up maybe seven, eight yards. A good carry after the penalty. Yeah, so we're talking about penalties in obviously in football, association football. Here is the tackle there coming in. In association football, a penalty you will know is a, a free uncontested kick at goal. A penalty in American football is basically suggesting that one of the players, either on offense or defense, has infringed the rules. They've done something illegal against the rule book and it costs the team yards as the ball is handed off to Diobi once again. And Diobi picks up another five or six yards. And it'll bring up third and short. So anytime you hear us talking about penalties or flags on the field, it means there has been an infringement by one of the players and that will cost whichever team he is in yards further back and obviously therefore make it more difficult for them to pick up first downs. Cole? Some vicious hits going in on this on, by these junior teams. All these kids under 19 have been around the game for a while. East Kilbride, very experienced unit. Critical down now, third and four for this London blitz. They hand the ball up the middle and that's good defence right in the heart of that East Kilbride's defence. Big tackle, number 71 on the tackle there, Jonathan Leatham Line, who's selected for the NFL Academy this year as part of the 2018 under-17 Brit Bowl winning team. Uh, part of the NFL Academy, we'll tell you a little bit more about that as the game progresses, but a great play by him. Brings up fourth down now, Matt, for the Blitz. Dol Byer on the carry. Um, yeah, fourth down, and you would have already seen you might think, well, it's fourth down, so therefore they're going to kick the ball away. Well, they've got a couple of options. They can either keep their offense on the field, which Livy, it looks like they are doing, and he drops back to pass, and he's got his man on the far side again. It's in and out of the hands of the receiver who caught that touchdown on the last play. And he just couldn't haul that one in this time. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, Sophocles here on that slant call. Yeah, you can see on the replay here, uh, the quarterback Livy does all he can, but Sophocles just can't hold on to it, maybe trying to turn his head upfield and get that touchdown, catches the ball at the two. Angus McConnell was there, or thereabouts, but uh, Sophocles had a chance for a second one there, but the ball's turned over now, EKP at their own 15. So can the Pirates get something going as the ball is handed off and runs a long way laterally, does McGregor, but Robbie McGregor can't turn the corner, and that's going to be a tackle for a loss on first down. Alexander a Littlewood knifing through from the London Blitz on that play and you can see why they're so effective immediately on second down they're now in a situation where they're second and 14 already uh, Blitz have put this offense under pressure and that's the sort of thing we've seen all season from the Blitz second and 13 McKigan drops back to pass and he's got a man up top if he can hold that in it's just drifts out of bounds looking for Christian Rebruger So here we go on third down. Apologies once again. It appears we left the BBC Sport website momentarily, but all things should be back up and running now if you're watching on that channel. We're streaming on three different areas today. Wow, all-out blitz there from the London Blitz. They were showing that we're going to send everyone, and it seems to have caused some panic on that EKP line. We'll see what the referees decide to do here. You can see them huddling up. They often do this at the middle of the field, just to check that they've got consensus on the call. Here's the ref. Offside. On the defence, with contact. Five-yard five penalty, third down. So that gives the Pirates a little bit of breathing room and from third and 14 it becomes third and nine. But still, the Pirates are going to have these big blitz defenders already psychologically in their head. And McKiggan, you can see very nervous feet, the offensive line. Look at, look at the defensive front from the blitz. There are three East Kilbride players there not knowing which of these blitz players is going to come and put pressure on McKiggan. And they all come and McKiggan has to get it away. And the bonus with that is that's really well defended that time. That's uh, Khalid Adisa. On the coverage, intended receiver there was Callum Wilson, and that makes things very difficult. When you've got nine men on the field, and seven of them almost are coming through to attack the quarterback, then that quarterback doesn't stand much of a chance, Cole. It's a high-risk strategy by the London Blitz. If you blitz all seven of your defenders, it means that you're isolated one-on-one -on, -one on those receivers. If EKP can exploit that, then maybe they can get a touchdown themselves. Dolbaya back deep to return for the Blitz. The punt is this time it gets it off very well but it's a a bobbly one it doesn't make a great contact off his boot 
and that ball comes to rest and the blitz will take over once again and you mentioned field position earlier on Carl and at the moment the blitz are winning that field position battle they are and this is what they've done all season they put teams offenses under huge amounts of pressure you can see here the snap is okay but the kick just slices off the side of the punter's foot and as a result uh, it only has a net gain of about 15 yards and that puts that defense for East Kilbride under more and more pressure. It's very difficult to keep holding out when you're camped in your own half, especially against the blitz offense that are so uh, quick to score. So here goes Marco Livy again, and Marco Livy hands the ball off on first down, and once again, very, very positive yardage. This time, the ball carrier is Diobi, and uh, they call the Blitzers running back crew the four horsemen because of the fact that they rotate these four very, very talented players. And, and it means that you've always got a situation where you've got fresh runners coming into the backfield, Matt. And Diobi, this time, oh! Marco Livy doesn't see that linebacker, number 99, Jamie, James Richards, just hovering in that spot, and James Richards almost picks that pass off. Yeah, you can see him looking at his hand. He's looking at his taped fingers, saying, oh, if I hadn't had taped fingers there, you'll see on the replay, goes straight through his hands. Livy drops back, sees what he wants, but doesn't see the lurking linebacker there, and that's very close to an interception for James Richards. Ball handed off on third down, and that's going to be very, very close for a first down. It all depends on the spot of the ball and where the officials spot that, but the official on the far side, you can see to the top left corner of your screen holding his hand up, is suggesting that they are short, so it's going to be fourth and inches. Basically, only need a few inches to secure another four chances to move the ball, and you'd expect, with the way that this blitz offense has started, that these inches won't be an issue to pick up. And there they are, and once again, it's Diobi who falls forward, picks up five yards, and a blitz first down. Ben Gallagher tried to make the play there. When you've got a situation where you're defending fourth down in just a few inches, the only real chance you have as a defense is to hit those gaps very hard. That's the end of the first quarter. And there we are. This first period in the under-19 final comes to an end with the score of the London Blitz 6 and the East Kilbride Pirates 0. So the score on the board looks competitive. You would argue the Blitz have the upper hand at this point, Cole. They do, but EKP are holding on. If they can defend this series and they can prevent the London Blitz from getting into the end zone or indeed getting a field goal on this series, then you feel like EKP could come back into the game. But their field position in that first quarter, and we're running 12-minute quarters here, and both these teams are running, which is why the clock seems to be running so quickly, just 12-minute quarters. But if EKP can get out of their own half, they might be able to do something in their own running game. But so far, they've been camped and defending back in their own half and it's been very difficult going for them they made an early start that was good but they need to get out of their own half now so get in touch with us if you want to during the day today the hashtag is BritBowl33 we'd love to hear if you're watching at all whether you're watching and supporting one of these two teams whether this is the appetizer and you're tuned in ready for the premiership final between the Tamworth Phoenix and the London Warriors later on and here comes Livy, and he goes to the air looking for a receiver, and it's in and out of the hands. Oh, and the flag, the flag, oh, it came out of the pocket, then went back into the pocket, and then came out once again at the end. The intended receiver was Darren Agu, and Agu still on the ground, and that's uh, an interesting call there from the official. You saw him pull the flag out, have a think about it, pop it back away, and then I think he might be flagging for a late hit at the end. Let's see what the call is from our official, as referee David Knight consults with his crew. But whatever is going to happen, this is going to be against the Pirates. Here's referee Knight. Pass interference. On the offense, number 15. 15 yard penalty. Second down. So, wow. pass interference. Darren Agu, the intended receiver. Pass interference call means. Well, pass interference means that you've prevented another player from making a clean attempt to catch the football by either pulling their jersey or pushing them to the ground while they're in the air or in any other way interfering with their ability to catch that ball cleanly. And that's what number 15 did. What's interesting about that play call is there was toing and froing on both sides of the ball and it ends up being the offensive receiver, uh, Darren Agu, that's actually called on the penalty. So it pushes pushes the blitz back to first and 25. So, Livy drops back to pass. He fakes the handoff, puts the ball up off his back foot. He's got a receiver out in front, and it's caught! And it's caught in 
traffic. And number 82 for the Blitz, Emmanuel Akaba hauls that one in with a pirate draped over his back. Ronan Haddow on the coverage. But the receiver, Akaba, manages to keep his concentration. Touchdown, Blitz. Well, we knew the Blitz could run the ball. We didn't know they were so accurate with the pass. Livy, an absolutely fantastic over-the-shoulder throw right underneath the goalposts to Emmanuel Akaba, who makes a fantastic catch under huge amounts of pressure. Good job, Blitz. Now it's a very steep hill for the Pirates to climb as Livy goes back to the end zone, over the top, and that could be offensive pass interference against Agu once again. There was a definite push against the Pirates' defender call. Yeah, you're not allowed to push off against another player in order to create space for you to catch the ball. So we'll see. That's twice now. We think that it's going to be called against Darren Agu. He's obviously pass keen. interference. On the offense, number 15. 15-yard penalty, replay try. He looks around at the referee as if to say, really, me again? <laughs> Twice now, well, if he has been called on the plane. If he watches that back later on when he gets back home, he may well see what we all saw and the officials saw. But it is still the extra point attempt. Now, again, in teams are allowed to go for extra points either by kicking the ball through the uprights or, and that will be a one-point extra point, or if they attempt to try and get back into the end zone on the extra point try, they will be awarded two points. So Livy in the offense now, back close to the 20-yard line. He puts the ball up top again, looking for the receiver, and it's just out of the reach of Sophocles. And that means that the score will remain the London Blitz 12 and the East Kilbride Pirates 0. But already you feel that East Kilbride have a mountain to climb. They do, and it's just it was kind of inevitable because, as you can see, as we look now at this touchdown throw, which was excellent, Livy under a big amount of pressure there, and he manages to get the ball to his receiver, Emmanuel Akaba, under the posts. And it was not bad defending, was it, from Ronan Hadda, the defensive back, but Akaba just making a focused his eyes on the football, pulled that ball down into the basket, and it was perfect delivery by Livy. So we have another kickoff. Akano will kick off for the Blitz. And deep to return for East Kilbride. Hoping to get some decent field position for them to start their next attack against this blitz defensive front. And it's basically a defensive war. Another chip kick. And what this is suggesting. And what this is suggesting to me is that the Blitz are more than happy with their defence and don't mind giving the Pirates the ball close to midfield because at the moment they think, you know what, if we chip that ball on the kickoff, there's a chance we might recover and get possession. If we don't, our defence will stop you and then we'll get pretty good field position anyway. It's Christian Rubuga who is back there for the East Kilbride Pirates. That's who they're trying to avoid kicking the ball to which is why you're seeing these short kicks but this may play into the EKP hands because they've now got much better field position than they've had throughout the first quarter there's a stoppage in play there by the officials because the London Blitz have taken their first time out this gives us opportunity to say as we're here from referee Knight time out London one one three on the clock So, once again, this gives us opportunity to say, if you've just tuned in, this is coverage of Brit Bowl 33 here from the New River Stadium in London. The London Blitz under-19s taking on the East Kilbride Pirates under-19s as an appetizer for the main event, which is Brit Bowl 33, the Tamworth Phoenix against the London Warriors, which will kick off at 4 p.m. this afternoon. I'm Matt Walker alongside Carl Walkinshaw, bringing you coverage. So here we go, first down, East Kilbride. Can McKigan and this offense get moving any further than they have done so far? Here comes that threat of the blitz. Look at the rush, but they avoid that rush this time. And Robbie McGregor has space, and he's into blitz territory, down to the 30, pushed out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And I suppose, Carl, if you can push that ball wide and avoid that rush, that whole field opens up to you. And this is the high-risk strategy that I was talking about at the beginning when they were blitzing hard, these London blitz uh, defenders. If you put seven men on the line of scrimmage like that, if the EKP 
you can get past that initial attack. There is acres of open space there to run in, and that's exactly what Jack Cochran there, the running back for EKP, exploited. Matthew Davis, head coach for the East Kilbride Pirates, trying to find a way to unlock this blitz defense. McKiggan at quarterback, two running backs with him. Here comes that pressure again, and they tried to get to the right-hand side this time. And if the man can turn the corner, which he just about manages to, and that time it's Rory Hutton, picks up maybe a yard maybe not it's going to be well picks up four or five yards on that one so a good positive play back to back for the pirates yeah and it's a race to the edge you can see it here there's cochran trying to get to the edge sorry rory hutton trying to get to the edge and he does outrun those two defenders but it's big number 55 sue and Oshin, that has to come across and make the tackle for the london blitz so the pirates have something going if they can score off this drive it makes it a whole different ball game McKiggan again, two running backs trying to pick up that London blitz rush. And that's a high snap again. And this one is going to be ended before it begins. And Jack Cochran doesn't really have any opportunity. And unfortunately, we saw early on in the first quarter, an error on the center quarterback exchange led to a turnover. And it was close again there, Carl. You can see how it's going back and forth this one. Sometimes the EKP Pirates are getting past that line of scrimmage and making the big gain. But more often than not, those London Blitz linebackers and defensive line putting pressure on this three-man offensive line of EKP. And they're getting into the backfield. That was Oshin again with a tackle for a loss, third and 12. So long way to go, a mountain to climb. Here comes that Blitz pressure. And there is pressure. And McKiggan has to wrap that ball and just protect and secure it because that wave of Blitz defenders is almost Almost, almost impossible to get round. You've got to think that uh, McKiggan and the offense need to try and pitch the ball out wide, but he's, as soon as he's getting the ball from the center, call, he's under all sorts of pressure. Yeah, they're just blitzing those A-gaps, and they're bringing people off the edge as well. That's Oshin with his third consecutive play. You are watching under-19 football. Some of these players look well over 19, if you ask me, Matt. Very large, and 55 Oshin is one of those. A big, rangy linebacker, especially at this age. Just explain, Carl, you mentioned A-gaps there. Okay, Obviously, there may be people who are just uh, falling onto this sport on the BBC website for the first time. What do you mean by A-gaps? Yeah, so the A-gaps is either side of the centre as the ball comes to rest there at the uh, five-yard line. So a decent punt by EKP, which will pin which will pin London Blitz back. So when the, the A-gaps is just a name given to the gaps, either side of the centre, the man that's snapping the ball in this game. And when we say A-gap Blitz, we mean that the London Blitz are sending players in that gap. A blitz basically means, although it's the name of this London team, a blitz basically means when you're sending more defenders than normal through to try and put pressure on the quarterback. Um, and like you said, the offensive line, the blockers, if you like, who are trying to protect the quarterback, those gaps between the offensive linemen, we give letters. And the A gaps are, as you say, either side of that centre. So here we go, first down blitz. And the ball is handed off on first down. And the carry is by Nicholas Dolbaya. Nicholas Dolbaya, one of the Blitz's four horsemen. In fact, they rotate four men in the, in the backfield. He picks up four yards. It'll be second and six. It's an opportunity here for EKP to do something. They've got the Blitz pinned back, but they need to bring some kind of pressure of their own. Handoff once again. This time, making the cut out is Temi Fagbemi. And Fagbemi has a gap, and he puts on the afterburners. But flags come out, and when flags come out in that vicinity, that means that play's coming back. Ben Gallagher trying to make the tackle there at the line of scrimmage, but it means the running back can get free to Bayer, and he's just a very quick runner down that field. Temi Fagbemi recruited to play high school football in the USA, but he's decided to stay and attend the NFL Academy here in the UK in September. But he's an incredible running back with very, very natural instincts, can see those gaps, knows when to plant his foot. And we've got a lot of talent on display here who could take things a lot further. Here's our referee. Holding. On the offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty, second down. Explain holding to his call. So holdings when an offensive lineman grabs a, a defensive player, can be a defensive lineman or a, a, any offensive player actually, grabs a, a defensive player and prevents them from uh, escaping and making a tackle. And oftentimes what you'll find is that the, uh, the line between holding and not holding is a grey one. So it sometimes uh, needs to be interpreted by the referees and that's what they've done here. So second and a yard and this time the ball is handed off again. And Dobaya 
Dobaya gets the carry and there's a signal from the Pirates that Dobaya may well have dropped that football and now the official you can see them pointing to the right which means that East Kilbride have turned the ball over and they have a real scoring opportunity now taking over first down inside the 20 of the Blitz. Well we said if they could turn the ball over here if they could make something happen this is the best field position of the game that East Kilbride have had. They got lucky maybe with the holding call of the London Blitz on that last play that pushed them back to that second and third three situation and in, immediately they managed to rip the ball loose from the running back so this is great field position for EKP let's see what they can do here can McKigan and this offense get anything going and it looks like from where things are being founded as the blitz take another timeout there doesn't appear to be a lot of pressure this time maybe the blitz altering their defensive um, strategy on this drive but the blitz do take their second timeout they have three timeouts Time London eight minutes and 33 and a half so they do have three timeouts each team per half, and that means they can stop the clock and they can discuss their strategy. If they don't like the way that the other team are lining up, they can talk it over and make sure they're covering all bases. And obviously the Blitz deemed at this particular juncture that they didn't like what they saw from the East Kilbride offense and just wanted to reset things. You may see on your screen that some of those London Blitz players are wearing, they're all wearing white helmets, but some of them have the, the GB Lions logo on them, and some of them have the London Blitz logo on, and that just signifies that players involved in the Great Britain team as EKP line up for this first down. A real opportunity here for them to put some points on the board and get back into this game halfway through this second quarter. And here comes that blitz showing again, and McKiggan looks to try and get the ball away. And then, oh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. But there is a flag down again, and I think that might be pass interference. Which way that's going to go? We saw two pass interference calls against the blitz offense earlier in the game. Is this one going to be against the offense or the defense as our officials get together to discuss? And it's number 23 for the blitz, who's basically going, who, me, Khalid? Adisa is going, what, me? Did I, what did I do? Let's have a look on the replay, Cole. Yeah, you can see here the ball's in the air, and you can clearly see the shirt being tugged there by DC. And I think that's going to go against him. I think the referees are just going to tell us the result of that now. Pass interference. On the defence, number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's David Knight, our referee this afternoon, who informs the East Kilbride Pirates that they will be marching the ball forward and that will give them first and goal. First and goal basically means that there are less than 10 yards to go, so you can't get another first down. You basically have four chances now to get the ball into the end zone. It just felt like that was a sure touchdown if that pass interference hadn't been there, that East Kilbride would be on the board already. So this field position now, they're still going to have to get the ball into the end zone. So Adisa may have saved them some points. To be fair, though, they picked up the blitz of the blitz that time as McKigging this time looks back to bow and he's swamped, absolutely swamped by that defensive front. And the first man there was Emmanuel Akaba. Yeah, Akaba all over the field making receptions in the end zone and also making sacks. A lot of these players will play both ways. It's an opportunity when you play at this level, at under-19 football and under-17 at youth level, it's an opportunity for you to play both ways and show your skills as an athlete before you specialise later on in your football career. So second and goal, even though they're back out to the 15-yard line now, and McKe McKeegan goes up top again, trying to pick on that same defensive back, Adisa, but this time he does get his head round well, and actually it's the receiver who has to play defender that time. And Josh McArdle found himself having to try and strip that ball away from Adisa to save the turnover. Yeah, very close battles. What you find when it's a nine-a-side football like this is that you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one competition between those defensive backs and those receivers. There's very little zone defense that's played. It's just man-on-man, -man, and we're seeing some great battles today. But if they can get that man-on-man -man coverage and they can... Ev oh, and that should be a false start. Number two, um, Jack Cochran just lost his balance there and you saw him slap his helmet as if to say that was my mistake. A false start basically means that a player moves forward before the ball is snapped and you're not allowed to do that and that will cost the Pirates five yards again. So from first and goal on the eight yard line, they now will face third and goal from close to their 20. This is Brit Bowl 33 coverage here. Matt Walker alongside Carl Walkinshaw. Finale weekend for the British leagues. And here is referee David Knight with the call. 
There are two fouls on the play. Prior to the snap, full start on the offence, number two. That's a five yard penalty. After the play was over, late hit, sports for light conduct, number 73 on the defence. That's a half distance to the goal. Third down. Oh, and that's a big break for the Pirates there. It is a late hit, and I was expecting a first down actually on that. We'll see where they come back with the change. Seven three. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, number 73. The box shows first down. It is an automatic first down after the penalty. Yeah, so uh, referee said third down, but it is going to be correction a first down. Correction, the down is one. Down is one. And there is the correction. So it is going to be East KP going in from their own nine-yard line. This is the best opportunity they've had so far to get back into this game. So let's try and forget the last two minutes of play, because East Kilbride are where they were two or three minutes ago. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Low snap again, and this time McKeegan escapes the pressure. Now he tucks the ball, throws it up for grabs and it's in and out of the hands of Rory Hutton and McKiggin's instincts work well there he escapes the initial pressure steps up into the pocket and then delivers a strike but it probably was a little high for Hutton it was smart thinking by the quarterback to try and escape that London blitz defenders that are just continuing to put the pressure on this quarterback we'll see whether EKP can get in the end zone on this down no damage done for the Pirates, second and goal, here comes that blitz pressure again, picked up well, flips the ball out to the flats, and it is caught by a receiver who picks up two yards, and that receiver, once he gets up, we'll get that number for you, that receiver is Josh McArdle, so maybe a yard on the play, but that brings up third down, and that's the problem so far for this offence, McKiggan is having to get that ball out as quickly as he can, and when that's the case, He's not being able to, for his receivers to get far down the field. Ricardo and Adisa having a battle on the top of your screen. Every play, those two going at it, was Ricardo trying to get into the end zone. Here comes the pressure from the blitz, but they drop off this time. Ball pops over the middle and it's intercepted at the two-yard line. And the ball is being run back this time by Tundi Ganyu. And Tundi Ganyu is still on his feet. He's at midfield. He has people around him. He's at the 25, the 15, the 5, and he's pushed out of bounds. And there's a flag down. And where that flag has come down, that could be a penalty against the blitz that could be illegal contact blocking the back which may bring that return back it will still be blitz football but it may well be that they don't have such good field position but a fantastic interception and actually that man there threatened blitz and then dropped into coverage call yeah tandy ganayu with a great play there and a great run back as well exciting for the crowd to watch that here Hold at in. new river stadium number 32 of the returning team 10 yard penalty from the spot, the foul, first down. So that's Morris Kayira that's been caught on the hold. But here's the interception. You can see uh, the number 39 there bringing the ball back, uh, Ganayu, and he runs all the way down the field. It's actually the quarterback uh, that has to make the tackle on that play. That's Jack Cochran actually running back that has to come through two, def uh, two blockers out in front of him and manages to get Ganayu out of bounds. But what a run back, fantastic play. Here go the blitz live. First down, Dolbaya on the carry, picks up six yards and the blitz are threatening again. And from first and goal on the nine yard line, all of a sudden we are now looking at the opportunity for the blitz to extend the lead out to three scores. And East Kilbride could have got into that one, but unfortunately McKiggan didn't see Ganyu, threw that ball over the middle and now we're here, second down, ball handed off once again, comes off the left side, great penetration that time and that time it was James Richards blasting through the line to bring the running back down which will bring up third and three but from here the blitz will keep their offense on the field you would have thought for third and fourth down so Marco Livy quarterback in he's got Dol Dolbaya alongside him and Dolbaya gets the carry and again that defensive front of the East Kilbride Pirates led by Jonathan Latham Jonathan Lethem selected for the NFL Academy himself. So we've got quality on both sides of the field here. Number of players from the Blitz and the Pirates. Fourth down upcoming. It would be a massive stop if the Pirates can halt Livy and the Blitz offense on this one. Ball back in Livy's hands. He goes to the air. He's looking for the man over the top. The catch is made. Touchdown Blitz, this time it's Emmanuel Akaba for the third score after the afternoon for the home team Blitz. I think it might be Sophocles, Matt, number 84, that actually made the reception on that one. 
We'll have a look and get you a replay. But again, great poise from Marco Livy there. But he's being given time. And he's being given time by that big offensive line of his. Those three guys up front giving him the protection that he needs. And then once again, the blitz will go for two rather than electing to kick through the posts. So Livy drops back to pass again. He comes to the corner. A bit of a miscommunication between himself and his receiver, Matteo McDowell. But nevertheless, the lead is now three scores. The London Blitz 18 and the East Kilbride Pirates 0 here at the under-19 Brit Bowl final from New River Stadium. Here we go, Carl. Here's a touchdown. Just goes to show you how devastating the turnovers here is as Livy drops back, lofts the ball up. And uh, actually, that's a previous play. Let's see if we can bring you the actual touchdown itself. But it just shows you how devastating some of these uh, turnovers can be because East Kilbride had the ball the other side. And now it's uh, the London Blitz to throw this one up. And it is number 84, Sophocles, that catches that one in the corner of the end zone. That's the second touchdown for Sophocles today. And that's a nice play by him. Again, the one-on-one the -on -one coverage from EKP was still good. Um, but the London Blitz receivers playing so well at the moment, especially Sophocles now with his second touchdown, that they're able to get just enough separation to make these catches in the end zone and put this blitz now three scores ahead. Going to be a tough ask for EKP to come back uh, from this one. They have shown signs of life, but they really need a score. And it very much looked like Sophocles on that particular play. Hold that in with one arm as the ball is fielded and a big block goes in there. And number 80 for EKP, Surrey and Little. Sorry, and Little there manages to get the ball close to the 40-yard line, and EKP will take over again. Neither of these teams backing down. Some really big hits going on. These are only under 19-year-olds, but they've been playing the game for a while. Good technique going in, and uh, neither of those two players on that hit giving any ground at all on the kick return. Now, what can EKP do to get back into this game? They really need uh, to get past this London Blitz defence. McKiggan with a bit more time, and he goes up top, and that's in and out of the hands of the defender that time. And that defender is number 25. That's uh, Matteo McDowell, again, who holds his face cage. What might have been... i tell you what you mentioned about it being under-19s, Carl. You do have to remind yourselves at certain occasions that these are not yet 20, these guys out there. But they do, in terms of the skill set, in terms of the physicality, their knowledge of the game. You, they've got a real bright future from both these outfits. Second and ten for McKiggan. This time the ball is handed off, and there is a little seam for the runner, and that should be a first down. And it is a first down. And the runner that time, number 30, Greg Black. Greg Black, another quality running back for the Pirates and they really do need to get something going with under five minutes left in the first period otherwise this one could run away from them rather quickly. So they're taking a breather here they've been running this hurry up offence haven't they EKP up to now, taking a breather just to get the play in but they're not huddling up, keeping this blitz uh, defence under pressure but here come the London blitz again with all the men on the line of scrimmage. Josh McCardle in motion ball handed off to Matthew Black, Greg and Matthew brothers and unfortunately Matthew doesn't have quite as much success as his brother did on the previous play and he loses five yards second and 15. Keenan Diaby coming so fast they really are anticipating that snap count and just getting in the backfield before EKP have a chance to even hand the ball off. McArdle in motion once again and the flag comes out prior to the play starting McKiggan throws it out to McArdle but that will be a penalty against EKP. Prior to the snap, full start. On the offence, number 32. Five yard penalty, plus second down. Matthew Black guilty of starting early on that one. So another five yards in the wrong direction for the Pirates. Second and 20 now. And they're shooting themselves in the foot, I'll be honest. A lot of the ground that they have gained so far has become on blitz in discipline. They've had a few offensive moments, Pirates, but a lot of it has been down to as the ball sails over the head of Christian Rubuga. Yeah, a lot of their uh, their ground gains so far have become come from penalties against the Blitz, and now it comes up third and long, and a lot to do for McKigan here. Khalid Adisa with good coverage on that play for the London Blitz. We called his name a few times. He had a one pass interference call in the end zone, which actually saved the Blitz six points. And since then, he's been uh, having a clean sheet, a very good defensive back, Adisa. Now, the Blitz, they, they know that there's going to be a pass coming here. Do they send that rush still as uh, Little comes in motion? And they do drop more people. And 
And running back this time, Matthew Black, is corralled close to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he may well lose a yard, and another disappointing outing for the offense comes to an end as they will kick the ball away with three minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first half of the Under-19 Championship here from New River Stadium in North London. They haven't had a chance, EKP, to really get the ball. In the, the early series, Matt, where they were running the ball inside the two guards or just outside the two guards with good blocking, and they managed to have some success with that. Now the play is being dictated entirely by this London Blitz interior blitzing linebackers. And it's making it very difficult for EKP. So the punt is up and it's a high hanging kick and you would imagine that this one won't be returned. It takes a big blitz bounce and the, uh, the Pirates in the form of Ben Gallagher, number 50, quickly jump on that one to stop the ball getting any closer for the blitz. And it will be first and ten blitz just outside their 35 yard line. EKP three scores down at this point in the game after a very good start. They did have some plays that they ran, some yards that they got with those running backs of Cochran and Hutton, but they haven't really been able to do anything since then. And this defense under relentless pressure from the Blitz running attack. First down, Blitz, and ball handed off, and uh, running back dances a little in the backfield there, trying to look for a gap, but there is no gap for Ose Binney. And he is wrapped up back at the line of scrimmage where it will be second and ten. Stay with us at halftime. We'll be bringing you analysis of this first half. Gone a very, very quickly in this first half. Not even an hour into the game in terms of real time as the ball handed off this time to Dolbayer. And Dolbayer has the edge and he gets the first down and he's off. He's at the 40, but the flag comes back again. And for all of Dalbaya's efforts, this one we think will be coming back. He's not seen the flag yet, but he will be disappointed. Marco Livy walks back to the sideline, shaking his head. Quarterback Livy, he saw the flag. And unfortunately, there will be another call, another big game wiped off the board. Great, uh, great scenes from the stands there. Beautiful September day here, the 1st of September. And uh, good to see so many people coming out supporting the under-19 game, Cole. Here's a call from referee David Knight. Holding. On the offense, number 84. 10-yard penalty from the spot. Second down. Leonardo Sophocles getting caught on the hold there. And it was a, a critical block, set the running back free down that right-hand side. So they take the ball 10 yards back. It's going to bring up second and six for London Blitz. So here they go again, back to the ground once again. And great strength shown, great strength by Diobi. Diobi drags Pirates with him. So that is going to be a first down. So even after the holding penalty, the strength of this four horsemen backfield of the Blitz. As two minute warning, two minute warning at 153, 153. So that is a two minute warning. The clock we have on screen, the clock we have on screen is just a guide. So we are 153, 153 in the first half remaining. The Blitz will be looking to see if they can add a fourth score, and the ball is handed off once again to Dolbaya. And Dolbaya pushed backwards. Number 71 for the Blitz. Uh, for, sorry, for the Pirates. Jonathan Letham once again halts Dolbaya's progress. Yeah, Letham line making a nice play on that one. He is that NFL Academy player. You can see why he's been solid. Most of the time up the middle, if they've run at him, he's been like a brick wall. Clock continues to run, second and ten here. Under-19 championship from New River Stadium. London Blitz in the white jerseys against the East Kilbride Pirates in red. Blitz dominant at the moment. And this time, it's Ose Binney trying to get to the edge. But he's pursued by Jock Jack Cochran, and Jock Jack Cochran does a great job there of not allowing any yardage on that play. Jack Cochran playing offense and playing defense. One of those players as part of the 2016 Under-17 Brit Bowl winning team and the Under-19 Plate Championship winning squad as well. And he shows his speed that time getting to the edge, which he needed to do. 
because uh, London Blitz running backs do have speed. Cochrane matching him on that one. Third and long, Livy hands off once again, and this time it's Diobi, and Diobi is tackled for a loss. Cochrane again on the play. Yeah, they're working that left-hand side, and Cochrane is equal to it. He's pushing him back on two plays. He's going to bring up fourth and 11, so good job, Jock Cochrane. Clock continues to run. EKP electing not to stop the clock. They're just wanting to want to get back into the dressing room at half time to try and uh, lick their wounds, make some sort of adjustments and see if they can come out firing in the second half. Receiver back there is Christian Rubuga. See if he can add a hint of magic at the end of this first half. Ball is up and it's high and it hangs in the wind and it's going to be a very short punt which takes a bounce for the Pirates and that well could be the half time interval right there to see if the ball gets into the hands of our referee David Knight who will maybe signal that but looks like there might be time for one more play so Carl I think it is pretty much at the beginning of this one we the blitz got on the board early and we then thought that uh, the Pirates were coming back and going to keep this one close. But I think that defensive pressure has really been key to this 18-point lead. Yeah, it's relentless pressure from the London Blitz. You'll see it here even on this play. They're bringing six, seven guys every single down and EKP have not been able to find a way either to bust through the line or to make sure that they can get wide against these London Blitz players. McKigan in trouble once again and he tucks the ball and runs. And he gets dragged down after a pickup of two. And that, I think, will be the final play of this period. In fact, no, I think that's going to be timeout. Timeout. East Kilbride. There are four seconds left in the half. So there we go. Matthew Spoonie Davis, head coach of the Pirates, wanting to eke this first half out as long as possible. Positive yardage gained on first down, so it looked like McKiggan was trying to go to the air on that first play. He would think he's going to try and do the same on the second play. Three receivers out. We'll see whether they do go to the air on this or whether the blitz uh, will put the quarterback under pressure immediately. Let's see. Uh, they don't rush quite as many. He goes down the sideline looking for his receiver, and his receiver is very, very well covered that time by McDowell. Trying to get to Sarlan Liddell. But uh, no, joy, no joy on that one. And that will bring the half to a close, Matt. So at halftime here in the under-19 game, the score is the London Blitz 18 and the East Kilbride Pirates 0. Don't go away because when we come back, we will be going straight down to the halftime show. So we will be joining you for the second half shortly. But for now, it's halftime here at Brit Bowl 33 between the London Blitz and the East Kilbride Pirates. We'll be back with you shortly. EP Sports brings you the UK's largest range of American football equipment, from helmets and shoulder pads to gloves and boots. They stock all the latest items from the biggest brands with great prices and fast shipping options all across Europe. What's more, EP have just launched their own team wear range, allowing you to rep your program in a huge range of garments from top suppliers. You can even set up your own team shop, and to kick things off, EP are offering up custom team polo shirts at just £10 a pop. To learn more, check out epsports.co.uk. Good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're watching this. Hope you have a great day. I hope this podcast has made you smile a little bit. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into and what we do and why we do it. But yeah, just keep on listening and thank you.
Welcome back to Brit Bowl 33. We are here at a very sunny new River Stadium for the EP Sports Halftime Show. I am Tash Crump and I'll be taking you through the analysis of the first half. Alongside me, we have Selenka and Bam Bam from X's and O's Podcast. How are you guys doing? Very well, very well, very well. How are you doing? I'm good. It's a great game so far. Not only right? is it a great game, the atmosphere out there is ridiculous. We've been in the stands with the fans. EKP have come in there hundreds they've got flags everywhere people dressed up as pirates to support their boys so it's brilliant same with the London Blitz guys I know they haven't had to travel far but they've come with family and friends as well and flags and all sorts so the atmosphere is crazy Bam Bam how are you finding it? Uh, it's been it's a real good game so far to be honest uh, so happy to see that you know so many people have actually come out to watch it we've got a Brit Bowl in London um, yeah it's turned out everything that I thought was going to be yeah, for sure. Great promotion for Brit Bowl here in the UK. Yeah. Um, so the current score is 18-0 to the Blitz. Were we expecting this or did you think that it was going to be a closer Ooh. match? Um, me personally, I was expecting it. Being a Blitz senior player myself, um, I was definitely expecting it. I've been rooting for the Blitz guys. Um, however, I, I do have a nice relationship with the EKP head coach. So I thought it would be semi-close, um, obviously rooting for the Blitz. But I thought um, the EKP guys would put up more of a challenge. The last time these guys played, it was very high scoring. Um, but for all you know, second half, EKP can turn around. But so far, so good for the Blitz. They're definitely dominating. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a very close game. I uh, thought both teams were going to come out and play, but it seems that the Blitz are uh, slowly trying to run away with this one. Um, both teams, however, you know, anything can happen any given Sunday. They've all got a second half to play. Um, EKP, I know, have a lot of playmakers, and, you know, it might just be a thing where the gear's got to get going. So I wouldn't count those guys out just yet, but, I mean, I think there's a lot, a lot more to come. And when you say running away... He literally means running, running away, away. Yeah. <laughs> because whenever they get the chance, they are running that ball to yeah. get as close as they can to the end zone. Yep. And then they're doing those nice swish passes yep. yeah. to their receivers. So right now we have got one running TD and two passing TDs. Yeah. Um, the running TD coming from number 24, Diobi, and the two passing TDs, number 84. Um, unfortunately, really sorry, didn't catch his name. Yeah. Um, however... The QB, Levy. Yeah, Marco. Marco. That, the guy, when you, when you look at him, he's a little bit short for a quarterback, so you think, ah, oh, maybe he'd be handing it off to his um, running backs quite often. But the guy's got a decent arm, arm on him. He's finding number 84 with ease. Um, props to number 84, he's finding a space. But to hit some of those passes, he's, he's, he's hit. Brilliant job. And on top of that, I think he's got to the end zone with his, with his guys, what, two, three, four times now? But unfortunately, two of them pulled back due to penalties. So he's definitely having a good game, number two. Do you think, Bam Bam, that that is the biggest problem right now for the Blitz, is they are getting actually more than three touch? They've actually had more than three touchdowns in this yeah. in this first half, and that's what's causing them the flags? Um, well, I would say that getting three touchdowns would be good for them in any case anyway, so, you know, I'm not sure that... Head coach is not going to be angry about that. He's going to want the fourth, though, isn't he? Yeah, the one that got yeah. pulled back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's another thing that I'll come on to. So, EKP yes. also had a potential touchdown yeah so earlier in the match uh, we saw that EKP nearly got a touchdown unfortunately it was called back uh, due to a blitz defense uh, pass interference yeah. um, didn't get the touchdown obviously didn't catch the ball yeah. do you think it would have been a touchdown and do you think this game would have been a little bit closer if that blitz player hadn't done technically his job because you yeah. can see don't want somebody can't pass and catching the ball sorry being a defensive back myself sometimes you have to just do, do what needs to be done yet sometimes your coach is going to tell you you know what take one for the team take the flag um we'll take the 15 yards rather than a, than a touchdown and i think he's done a brilliant job there um if ekp get the touchdown it's still what, 18 6 or 18 7 so um, blitz still have a strong hold on the game so i'm not too sure if that makes a massive difference um, on the outcome of the first half but i guess every point counts at the end of the day but i think in my personal opinion brilliant job on the db he got his hands on him if he he knew it was a touchdown, take the 15 yards over a potential um, touchdown any day of the week. And do you think that players like Scott McKiggan and Jack Cochran and uh, Rory Hutton, who were their key running backs in their yeah. QB, do you think that they're going to be the difference in this game for EKP? Oh, um, sure, most probably, most definitely. I mean, I think one of their numbers, number 30, are the names yeah. you mentioned. And um, one thing you can see from the EKP side is those guys are really good, have really good fundamentals. So um, I think that might actually be a deciding factor into how they get back into this game and claw their way back in. So yeah, if I'm the um, EKP offensive coordinator, I'm going back to that run game. They had... Um, they gained decent yards from it in the first quarter, um, a few de um, decent runs in the second quarter as well. So if I'm EKP, I'm going back to the run game. I know it's going to eat into the clock a little bit, but I think they'll 
did get a lot more from their run game than their pass game, in my opinion. And do you think that what they're going to be trying to do with their run game is get it to the sidelines so that they can run out of bounds to stop that clock? 100%. If they, if they can get to the side sidelines, yeah, do it. But if you're going to get 10, 15 yards running up the gut, then, then do it. I think there's plenty of time to regain those 18 points that um, they're losing by at the moment. Definitely. Um, so what have the Blitz been doing the EKP haven't to actually make sure that they've been achieving this lead well scoring touchdowns for one <laughs> but I mean they've just been they've been moving the ball you know yeah. um, you know the communication between the QB and his receivers they know where yeah. they're going to be they know where to be out on the field um, the linemen in front you know they don't really get a lot of credit all the time but they're doing a beautiful job protecting yeah. their guy giving them that time to get the passes out there um, and I think like you know EKP literally just need to play with a bit more unity get their heads down and you know the game ain't not over by a long shot 100% mm. and just to add to that blitz um defense wins championships and blitz defense flying at the moment they're everywhere they're sending guys and every time they're sending guys they're either hitting a running back or killing the um the quarterback so their their defense is flying in the air as well their dbs you know they've been a little bit suspects but all in all i think they've done a brilliant job um and they're yet to concede a td in the first half i think their defensive corner would be absolutely um um, happy with their performance in the first half and just be asking for more of the same. If you can keep that donut on the, on the board right now, they've won the championship. So, And we've also been same. seeing a couple of, um, of pass interference from the offence. Yes. Do you think if the if teams can cut back on that, do you reckon that that's going to be the difference between them getting the touchdowns and, yeah. and, and being able to make plays? I mean, I don't even think it's only just interference uh, mistakes period you yeah. know if you can stop the mistakes period a lot of people like the game teams um games are lost you know before the whistle is actually gone um due to the mistakes whether it's a flag for personal fouls whether it's pi whether it's whatever so w both teams will really want to look at limiting those mistakes so they can actually capitalize on you know making the most of what they got on the field yeah the guys are young so these sort of mistakes are going to happen at this at this level of football um they they know they're being streamed live to thousands of people so someone yeah. wants to make that extra block to look to look good for their for um, their parents or friends whoever may be watching but sometimes that additional block isn't necessarily needed because we've seen a lot of block in the backs a lot of holding calls and um, which have brought some tds back so I think they just need to remain disciplined do their job and if you can lift the trophy at the end of the day that's more important than trying to get your two seconds of fame on, on the camera yep. and a lot of the time these under 19 players yeah some of them obviously go straight into Britball, but actually a few of them are looking towards NFL Academy, yes. oh, America, yeah. Europe. Yeah. Can you see some of these players? Obviously, we've already mentioned it in the commentary that a couple of the Blitz players especially have been yeah. chosen yep. for uh, the NFL Academy this year and have decided not to go over to colleges um, in America that have scouted yeah. them. W what do you think the future is for a lot of these players out on the field? I mean, I personally think the future for these guys is definitely bright. I mean, you look on that field today and I'm surprised. I couldn't believe some of them are under 19. Yeah, I was 100%. like, wow. So from a size perspective from the mentals they've got good knowledge of the game a lot of these guys I wouldn't be surprised if they end up in college uh, the academy as well that's a great new pathway which I believe that even if guys don't go to the states yeah. um, then they can still go via the academy and still play a high level of football within London you know which yeah. I know is going to appeal to a lot of young guys so yeah yeah, future is definitely bright. Um, I agree with Remy. I wish I was a little bit younger so I can have the opportunity to go to the NFL <laughs> Academy because it's 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 brilliant, especially because it highlights the sort of talent that we've got over here as well, and not just in America or going to Germany or other countries where they can play American football. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we've obviously seen a couple of the uh, Blitz under 19 players previously go to America, like yes. Aaron Mahoney Jones, who came back to the Blitz for a yep. bit this season, um, looking for future things. So obviously, we've already seen this happen. Yep. And I think it's going to happen a lot more. And now, with the NFL Academy happening, with more um, NFL games actually coming over to the UK, mm, yeah. could we potentially even see more senior players? So, for example, we've seen Effie Obada yep. um, head over and start playing. and playing at a high level as well. Um, do you think this is going to start opening the doors for now for some senior players that are at a, a higher level that are still at that age that can go over to the NFL start to do more? Yeah, I certainly hope so, especially, um, for example, we've got the um, adult final being streamed live um, at four o'clock. So if guys can get picked up from games like that and then more games being streamed across the actual season itself going onto YouTube, it's easier for guys to put tape together and send it out to potential employees, I mean, sorry, employers um, in the near future. So I think hopefully it's never, it's never too late. I, I say never say never. If you, you know, you're a little bit older and can't get into the NFL Academy, just keep playing the game, put some tape together, send it out to teams out in Germany and Europe or even potential colleges that might um, still take you on so I think the chance is still there and I hope to see a lot more guys from um, our side of the river go across to play American football at a professional level Definitely so who's the standout for both of you right now who you think could potentially be this game's MVP I know it's only half time and there, anything can happen yeah. anything can happen with another two quarters but 
Any standouts to you so far that could be on that list for the MVP? I mean, for me right now, is number 84. Uh, just the reception of Vital. Yeah. And he's yeah. got them. Right place, right time. From the Blitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from the yeah. Blitz. So it's got to be. That's it for me. Uh, for me... If not 84, then number two. I think yeah. Marco's having a brilliant game. He's yeah. he's picking uh, the right passes, making the right decisions, knows when to keep the ball and run. Um, I'm yet to see a bad exchange from his centre and himself. He hasn't fumbled the balls, put the ball in his uh, running back's um, hands nicely. So I think he's leading that offence perfectly and like I said, a lot of people would have underestimated him looking at his size and he's, he's done a brilliant job for me. And a lot of the time, unless the receiver is literally standing out like yeah. from the crowd it normally is your QB or your running back that does tend to get those exactly MVPs sorry <laughs> 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 but it's also you can say the same for DVs because obviously yeah. the whole team are doing their jobs and sometimes that DV who's making that interception yeah. so we saw it um, oh. yeah we saw <laughs> the pick that was so um, like what we said during the second quarter um, EKP in I think what they had about 10 chances yeah, uh, had, like, had it was first chances, and goal yeah. second and goal third and goal flag yeah. went back to first and goal so so many chances to actually get that touchdown and their final drive to get a touchdown end up be, being picked by yeah. number 39 um, so do you think that like he could potentially if he does that a bit more get on if the board as one picks, of those stand-up players yeah if he gets a few more picks most definitely and being a defensive player myself I'd love if a defensive player gets MVP <laughs> um, it's all, it's, it, anything me, for can me, happen yeah anything can happen <laughs> and I feel like defensive players need to work that extra bit harder to, to get an MVP award so ho hopefully you never know but um, I'm hoping that EKP's offence get the ball moving a little bit more um, especially if they put the balls in the hands of their running backs again so um, not saying I don't. I want Blitz defense to have a, a horrid time, but I want I want to see a lot, a, lot, a little bit more from EKP. Yeah, definitely more down towards the goal line. Yeah. So, with that being said, prediction for the end of the game, Oof. score prediction. <sighs> I, I'm not saying 50 burger because I'd hate to see anyone concede 50 in a, in a final, but I am going to say 35 to three in favour of the London Blitz. Okay. I'm saying 35 also, but 21, I think EKP will... It's a lot um, of points in the second half. It can happen. <laughs> are you hoping that special quarters? teams are going to step up? Because obviously, as we've seen, special teams haven't really been stepping up over the last few, uh, the last two quarters. I mean, yeah, I think uh, special teams all have to step up. Uh, everyone, not only just special teams, all the units will have to step up if they want to stand a chance in this next bit. But um, again... I don't think uh, the score actually tells the complete story of the game. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. EKP, like you said yourself, they've been in a, near the end zone many times and it's just their ability to convert on that last bit. So hopefully they'll have a bit more luck, you know, in the, in the red zone in the last 10 yards yeah. and be able to, you know, make something happen. But yeah, let's see. So you guys both think in a blitz win. Yeah, blitz win. And to be fair at the moment, it is looking like it could be a blitz win. But yeah. as we said, anything can happen in American yeah. football. There are still two quarters to go. Uh, we're going to head to a bit of a break now um, and then we'll be back. EP Sports brings you the UK's largest range of American football equipment, from helmets and shoulder pads to gloves and boots. They stock all the latest items from the biggest brands with great prices and fast shipping options all across Europe. What's more, EP have just launched their own team wear range, allowing you to rep your program in a huge range of garments from top suppliers. You can even set up your own team shop, and to kick things off, EP are offering up custom team polo shirts at just £10 a pop. To learn more, check out epsports.co.uk. Good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're watching this. Hope you have a great day. I hope this podcast has made you smile a little bit. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into and what we do and why we do it. But yeah, just keep on listening and thank you.
Welcome back. It is BritBowl33 here at the New River Stadium in London. Apologies for that as well, because I was actually joined by Selenka and Remy from the Exeter Nose. Remy did an amazing job, so... I'm so sorry, Remy. Um, OK, so what we're going to do now is we can go back to the game. Is the under-19s final. It is the London Blitz currently in the lead, 18, with the EK Pirates still yet to score. But let's see how the second half goes. I'm now handing you back up to Matt Walker and Carl Walkinshaw for the second half and commentary. Thank you, Tash. Great work as ever during half time there. I am Matt Walker alongside Carl Walkinshaw for the second half here of the Under 19s Championship between the London Blitz and the East Kilbride Pirates. Carl, what do we expect in the second half? We know Matthew Spoonie Davis has got a lot of experience. How does he rally his troops to come back from this deficit? Well, they're, not, they're able to compete one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen that they're able to match the London Blitz for speed. They're able to make, make running plays. They're able to cause turnovers. The problem is this London Blitz defense is just causing absolute havoc of this East Kilbride offense, and they're not able to do it consistently. And London Blitz now 18-0 ahead, so Spoonie's got to really pull out all of the stops now go deep into his playbook to find a way either you choose to try and block these blitzing linebackers and defensive linemen or you try and outrun them to the edge but you've got to make a choice about what you're going to do what you can't do is just sit there like a sitting duck and have sack after sack tackle for loss after tackle for a loss coming in got to find a way to control that line of scrimmage the worrying thing for the pirates is that the blitz are rotating those four horsemen running back room and as a result those guys will still be fresh yeah absolutely the blitz have shown that their running backs are very very strong interesting they've had two scores through the air as well to sophocles so he's been a standout wide receiver for the london blitz offense in this first half and he's playing ever so well even under pressure he's able to make the catches so the running game for the blitz has got going but they're scoring when they have to using their passing attack the Blitz will be receiving the football at the start of this second half, half or other, which puts an added pressure on the Pirates to try and snuff out that first attack and not go further behind. This is the Under-19 Championship, which is the precursor to the big one. Brit Bowl 33, the Premiership Final this afternoon, kick-off at 4 o'clock between the South Champions, the London Warriors, and the North Champions, the Tamworth Phoenix, and we're really looking forward to that one. We've been here all weekend with uh, Onside Productions, and we're streaming on all our usual channels, but also we're on the BBC, on the BBC Sport website, so if you are watching on there, thank you for joining us. If you're new to British American football, maybe you're a, a seasoned NFL fan, but you're not really too au fait with the British game, then we'll try and bring you up to speed with how things work. This under-19 game in this country is nine aside, so they drop the tackles. There are no tackles on the offensive line which obviously gives much more space for teams to attack, still play on a full-size field. And so it gives some big, exciting plays, both offensively and defensively. But here we go, the Pirates ready to kick off, get the second half underway. And it's a booming kick down to the 20-yard line where the Blitz will field that one. And the return guy, Emmanuel Acaba, makes one man miss and he's slung out of bounds. Jack Anderson with the tackle. Yeah, Ronan Haddo had an initial go at Akaba, but Akado just put a nice spin move on him on that kick return and just uh, had to get the linebacker, Jack Anderson, to come over and cover up the missed tackle. It's going to give the Blitz decent field position for this first drive, and it looks like they want to go hurry up straight away. EKP defensive line not right on point as the ball is handed off to Dolbaya. Dolbaya runs laterally a long way, long way, turns the corner, and as he turns the corner, a flag is flung from the centre of the field by one of our officials, the officiating crew this afternoon, David Knight, our referee, umpire Richard Moger, head linesman Roger Goodgroves, line judge Liam Wooten, back judge Amir Brooks, field judge Alan Christopher, and side judge Daniel Holt. All provided by Bafra. Holding. On the offence, number 84. Ten yard penalty to spot the foul. First down. So, first down after the holding penalty. It'll be first and 20. All our officials provided by Bafra, and all today's officials are members of the British American Football Referees Association. For more information about becoming an American football referee, visit the Bafra website at www.bafra.info. As this one, ball is handed off to Keenan Diobi. 
But unfortunately, the play is whistled dead before that one gets a chance to start. Final snap. Full start. On the offense, number 29. Five yard penalty. Bust down. And things go from bad to worse on this first offensive possession of the second half for the Blitz. And I wonder if this is a sign of things to come and fortunes changing for the Pirates. Sophocles on the hold on that one, the two touchdown hero of the Blitz so far, and now pushed back even further. First and 20, long way to go. Handoff goes to DOB once again. The ball is dropped and it's covered initially. It looks like it's covered by the Blitz. That was Diobi on the carry, but it actually has been recovered by the Pirates and an early turnover for the boys from north of the border. I don't know whether that was big Jonathan Leatham line that managed to rip the ball out. Maybe it was. I know there was a scramble for the football in the pile and the referees comes over and points in the direction of East Kilbride. That's the perfect start for EKP. They take the opening kickoff. They did well when they got the possession of the football. Let's see if they can do well now following that turnover. The Blitz wanted to start well but they've not Matt. We mentioned Jonathan Leatham already today selected for the NFL Academy and part of the 2018 under 17 Brick Bowl winning team so plenty of experience for that young man and we welcome back onto the field quarterback Scott McKiggan and the EKP offense had a torrid time in the first half trying to account for the pressure of the blitz and another flag comes in from the back judge so not going smooth at the moment. On the offense Five yard penalty, bust out. It appears at the moment, Scott, uh, Scott, apologies. It appears at the moment, Carl, that neither team want to move forward. Absolutely. This first, first few exchanges of this second half are littered with errors so far with penalties and the ball going back and forth and turnovers. Second and 15 to EKP. Here comes a blitz. Oh, and the ball's out again and it's on the ground and it looks like Suin Oshin has fallen on that one and recovered and there he holds the ball aloft does Oshin and that's going to be another quick turnover but the pressure again up the middle, Carl, was incredible. Well, it was absolutely timed to perfection, wasn't it? That blitz just as the snap, the centre gets the ball off and the quarterback under immediate pressure and has nothing to do tries to eat the football but in the end it's Oshin who we saw make a number of plays in the first half making a devastating turnover the blitz get the ball back almost in the position they lost it first down handed off to Dolbaya and Dolbaya has the edge once again spins out of the tackle picks up five yards a beautiful move to get to the edge and elude that first tackler Jason Henry's told his team head coach of London blitz told his team look let's put this away it's 18 nothing I want to come out at the beginning of the third quarter and really put this game away let's not give these this team that's come down from Scotland EKP any chance to get back into this one Blitz have come out full of focus and determination to put this one away. Oshin, who recovered that fumble in his final year. Great leader and long-term product of the Blitz program. Does anything that he's asked to do for this Blitz outfit. Ball handed off once again. This time it runs to the left-hand side and it's off tackle. Busting the gap. Out for first down territory is Diobi, and he ran into an acre of space outside that left guard position. They're just creating problems for this East Kilbride defense. What the, the East Kilbride defense not making the decision to blitz too much. They tend to be sitting back. They do. They are putting four, you know, two down defensive linemen and two linebackers on that line, but they're sitting back, not blitzing, allowing these blitz to have the way with them. Livy hands off to Dolbaya this time, and Dolbaya picks up a couple before he's snagged. That'll bring up second and seven. Ben Gallagher on the tackle that time for the East Kilbride and these linebackers now for East Kilbride really need to step up and stop the momentum of this opening drive uh, for the London Blitz. So second and seven, Livy and that offense, Dolbaya, one of two backs alongside him and Dolbaya this time both fakes and Livy goes to the air and he's looking for that man again and he's out in front, caught! Touchdown, Sophocles. That's his hat-trick of scores for the afternoon. And London could be out of sight. Sophocles, again, with the clutch catch. The defender there that time had two wide receivers streaking down the field and didn't know who to defend. He had to finally peel off and try and defend against Sophocles. But that's never going to work against a, a receiver with the calibre of Leonardo Sophocles. Third touchdown of the day. And that could be the nail in the coffin for these East... Kilbride Pirates. Two-point conversion attempt 
and this it's good. Caught and good by Agu this time. No offensive pass interference for Agu, and that extends the lead out to 26 to 0 in favour of the hometown Blitz. And what can Matthew Davis do to re energise his players? It's a long way back. Here's Livy. Livy dropping back, and that's the touchdown pass out to Sophocles. And it hangs up, and he just gets behind Ethan Stewart, who doesn't really have a chance to do much about that one. Let's see now Christian Rebruger back deep to return this kick. So far, it hasn't managed to reach him on any of these blitz kickoffs. Given an opportunity and a little bit of room, Rebruger could be a very dangerous proposition for the blitz. Everything going to script for the London Blitz currently, even the turnovers when EKP are getting them, they're not able to exploit ball going straight back to the Blitz. 26 nothing currently. Akano kicks it deep. Rebrugo off one bounce, does make does get a, a lane outside and cuts back to the inside. And he's tackled very, very well. And a flag comes in late. And the man who made the tackle remains on the floor and it doesn't look to be in a good way. Looks like a lower leg injury there. So we will, uh, maybe just a little bit of cramp, we will step away a moment. This is Brit Bowl 33, coverage from New River Stadium here in North London. It's part of the two-day British American Football Association finals weekend. We had Division 1 and Division 2 bowl games yesterday. We've got the under-19s and the Premiership the final today. Number 30, red team. Daniel penalty. First down. So to add insult to injury, that is a block in the back against the Pirates. Get involved with us here in the show. We'd love to hear from you to see whether or not you're supporting either of these teams or you're just settling in for the big premiership final this afternoon. Carl, what have we got? What tweets coming in? Jeremy Walker says, uh, hashtag BritBowl33 joining the Under-19 Championship for the second half. Things not looking good for the EKP Pirates, but he's hoping they can put some points up before all is said and done. Strathaven Academy, PE, say best of luck to Callum W playing in the Under-19 final in the American Football British Championships, and it gives a watch live there on the BBC. Lots of tweets coming in now, lots of buzz around this game. Uh, we're enjoying it. 26 nothing with the Blitz in full control of this one. But let us know your thoughts on the game today. The London Blitz deserve to be 26 points ahead. How can EKP get back onto the board? Let us know your thoughts. BritBowl33 is the hashtag for those tweets. So East Kilbride start their next drive just inside their 20-yard line. First down and 10. McKiggan and that offense. A lot of protection this time and the ball on a, a sort of a sweep play. Cochran, the running back, who once again is harrowed after a loss of three yards. Suin Oshin coming in again from that linebacker spot, that left outside linebacker position that he plays so well. Stand up, and he's coming again on this play. This time it's number 73, uh, the Luciano Gomska, who comes through to make the tackle on that one. Flag comes out, and that's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty because that occurred after the end of the play. A little bit of needle now between these two teams. You can understand there may be some frustration by the gentleman from Scotland, but let's have a listen to our referee. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct at number 39 wide. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Tunde Ganiyu guilty of that infringement and really cold. There's no need for that. 26 points ahead. You know, you can play relaxed, you can play fresh. Okay. You expect that sort of penalty to come from a frustrated Pirates outfit. But what that does do is gives the guys in red an automatic first down. Yeah, he'll want that moment back, I'm sure, when he looks back on the video. Blitz coming once again from the Blitz, and here it comes. They do time that very well, and this time it's Black who's looking to try and get outside the left edge of his offensive line. And he's tackled very quickly by Emmanuel Akaba, and Emmanuel Akaba, interestingly, Belgium native. Yeah, Akaba played very well both sides of the ball that time. No breathing room for EKP. 
This time they've used their cadence. That's clever by EKP. This is what they need to do. So they know that London Blitz keep blitzing and they put seven, six, seven guys are coming each time. If the quarterback can use his cadence. Offside. On the defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. If the quarterback can use his cadence to draw these defenders offside in the way that he did then, that gives a KP a chance to just creep the ball ahead as they've done there. Five yard penalty and it puts EKP in a better position. Second and nine for the Pirates. Two running backs. Ball comes back to Black to the left hand side. And if he can get around the edge, he's got some room and he has. And he gets his way past the markers for a first down and out close to midfield. Good run by Greg Black, exploiting the pressure of that blitz. Blitz? Sounds strange to say, but that's exactly what it is. And gets up to Hope to midfield for a Pirate first down. EKP going hurry up again as they did on that drive in the opening sequence of the first half. Trying to do that here in the second half. See if they have success here on first down. Bit of a mix up in the backfield. The number nine with the football. And he's going to be tackled for a loss in the end. I think it's That's Jeff, actually number two. Jack Cochran, yeah. Jack Cochran rather. Yeah, Jack Cochran not able to make any yards on that one. Again, the London Blitz just stifling this EKP offense, not giving them any room to breathe. They're on top of them almost before they're able to even get the snap off. So second and long, 11 after that loss on first down. McKigan in the offense trying to get something going. They're running a much more compact strategy this time as Black looks to get to the edge and he does. He cuts it back inside, gets past the 45, down to the 42-yard line. It's going to be close to another Pirates first down. So this change of formation where they're bringing everything in the middle now seems to be becoming a little more effective. Well, they've had to do that, haven't they? Because the London Blitz are putting so many defenders, whether they're in a three-point stance or a two-point stance, they're putting so many defenders on the line. EKP having to bring in tackles almost even though it's nine aside football they're swapping those receivers for tackles swapping Time those out. running backs london six minutes 30 in the third quarter swapping those running backs for tackles and that means they've got effectively a full-size offensive line to try and combat this london blitz attack Interestingly, the Blitz take a time out there just to settle things down. EKP seem to be developing a little bit of a head of steam here, gaining some momentum back, and although it's a long way back, 26 to 0, as you see uh, head coach Matthew Davies there on the far sideline. They're obviously a little worried about the way that the Pirates have managed to get something going on this drive. Current running back, Matthew Black, number 30, rushed for 483 yards and six touchdowns this season. So no stranger to churning up the field. EKP stick with that similar formation. They have almost a full offensive line now. In fact, one receiver, two running backs, and that almost gets the blitz to jump. And this is going to be a free play because the blitz defenders did come over the line. So even though, even though Matthew Black did get tackled for a big loss, that will be a five-yard penalty against the Blitz and an automatic first down due to the fact that it takes them past the yard marker. Offside. On the defence, number 32. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. Again, EKP being smart. Quarterback being smart in calling the cadence and that's drawing this London Blitz team offside again that's a second penalty they've had on this drive alone we mentioned that right at the beginning of the game Colin the first quarter about trying to change that cadence up and it has worked and it will mean that the Blitz are a little bit more cagey as this time Cochrane runs to the left hand side picks up three yards and this second down you can see that Blitz pressure particularly off the edge when they manage to get that inside gap there are there is space for the backs to exploit yeah, EKP doing everything they can to try and keep the pressure off this backfield. They're putting additional linemen at the line of scrimmage. They're using the voice of the quarterback. They're rolling out and trying to ensure that they give their uh, running backs and quarterbacks space to work in that backfield. Anything they can do to stop the pressure from this blitz team. Second and seven. And here's the run once again, trying to get to the edges. Matthew Black. And Matthew Black, great tackle that time by that man again, Suin Oshin. Third down. He's a devastating player, Oshin, isn't he? Coming off that left outside linebacker position with that two-point stance, crowding that line of scrimmage. And then when he comes through, we could see there the speed that he has also to, check, to track and chase Jack Cochran, who's not slow by any means. 
So third down, and this time it is Cochrane off to the left hand side. Jinx and jerks and manages to find some room and picks up another pirate first down. And there is definitely something going here from head coach Davis in this offense. They're having much sort of more success, are the EKP Pirates on the left hand side of that defensive line. They're running away from Sue and Oshin and they're having more success that side. Got to give some. Um, Give some love to offensive coordinator Scott Frame of the Pirates, who's obviously adjusted his system. This time McKiggan goes to the air and he picks out a man. And it's Matthew Black who makes the reception, then fumbles the ball. And Oshin is the man on the spot to recover for the blitz. So just when the Pirates think they've got something going, another disaster. And it's turnover blitz football. Just waiting for the signal from the referees. Let's have a look at the replay here as the ball gets completed to number 32. But you can see his counterpart, number 32, does enough to get that ball out. It's whether or not he made a football move as uh, Session comes over and makes the... Oshin comes over, rather, and makes the, uh, the fumble recovery. Maurice Kair with the forced fumble on that one, and it is blitz football once again. So... Just can't get enough going EKP to get back into this one. Ball handed off, and it's Fagbemi again to the right-hand side, and he's got the edge, and there's another flag, and every time they've run this play so far, the ball comes out once again. But every time they've run that play, and the blitz running, running back has space around that right edge, it's been because of an illegal procedure, well, not an illegal procedure, but an illegal penalty by the blitz offense and this time i've no doubt it will be a hold against the blitz which will mark them back once again it's the receivers on the right hand side when they're running down the field that are trying to get that holding on the offense number 84 10 yards from the spot the foul left down so the crowd not liking that here at New River Stadium as that penalty call goes in. Again, it's Sophocles, the three-touchdown hero now for the London Blitz, but he's guilty there of a hold on the edge. And what they're trying to do there is just free up the runner into space. He's broken past the line of scrimmage, and it's that last key block by Sophocles that will set that runner loose. And uh, at the moment, he's doing it illegally, but uh, not all the time. They've certainly had big plays where he has got a good, decent block in. And we always say about everybody's got an element to work on. Sophocles might be great downfield with his hands, but obviously his run blocking needs a little bit of work. So, first and ten once again for the Blitz. Can they overcome that latest infringement? Just taking a knee at the moment while uh, they w await for Nicholas Dolbayer to get back behind the line of scrimmage. Brit Bowl 33 here in New River Stadium, North London, on Sunday the 1st of September. Final day of action at this Brit Bowl weekend. Matt Walker alongside Carl Walkinshaw up in the booth. The ball is handed off and this time it's O.C. Binney and O.C. Binney has the edge, breaks it outside for a blitz first down and all four of these backs, pick your poison. They're so fresh, they've got speed, they've got agility, put the foot in the ground, turn on the afterburners, very difficult to stop. Yeah, they're not called the four horsemen of the apocalypse for no reason, are they? Like you say, talented athletes in the backfield for this London Blitz, making it very difficult for EKP. And here we go again, this time it's Dolbaya who's given the responsibility of carrying the football. And that is going to be a pickup of at least seven, maybe eight. In fact, they've given him nine yards on that carry. And the EKP defensive unit on their heels once again. Finding it very difficult to stop this ground game. Given again to Dolbaya, and this time he is stopped after a pickup of a couple. Ben Gallagher for the Pirates, but that will be enough for another blitz first down. Yeah, 26-0, the Blitz uh, still in control of this one and now driving down the field, really ominous. EKP need a turnover quickly. That's going to be a flag against the Pirates. They were trying to make a substitution in their man did not get off the field in time before the Blitz snapped that one. So even though I say Binny didn't get very far on that run, they are going to get more positive yardage for the having too many men on the field. Frustrating times for the Scottish outfit.
Yeah, they just couldn't get off the field in time on that play, could they? And you can see him sprinting down, but London Blitz quarterback smart to it and snaps the ball before that player has a chance to get off the field. And the flag has been waved off, so maybe he did get over the sideline just in time. So no penalty, so therefore it was a good defensive play for the Pirates. First down. Ball handed off once again to Dolbayer, and Dolbayer spins again, and this time he's met after the spin. A horde of pirates. Is there a collective noun for pie horde of pirates? If there is, let us know. But that's Duncan Doherty first to meet Dolbayer. Picks up three yards, second and seven. Yeah, Doherty and the rest of the Pirates defense doing a good job on the edge there, just uh, preventing that runner from getting into more space. This time coming around to the left-hand side, and that's uh, Jack Cochran again, both playing both ways this afternoon. Matthew Davis mentioned to us earlier on that they would do that. A number of players with the experience would do the same, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, it is fourth down. We, uh, the chain crew on the far side gave us two first downs and missed out second down, so it is fourth down, which means the punt team will come on for the blitz. And as a result... East Kilbride not completely ready, and it looks like they've got far too many men on the field there, and Ben Gallagher does his best to sprint off the field before this snap. There's ten players on the field, actually, if you look and count those red jerseys. But I, if I'm honest with you, I think that's a mix-up from the chain crew, because they did have the box marker on first down for two plays. So it is only a nine-man game, but I would be arguing if I was head coach Matthew Davis. Uh, hang on a minute, we thought it was third down. It said first down a couple of plays ago. Now all of a sudden Staying it's fourth down. It's a five-yard penalty. Still be fourth down. I think that's very harsh against the Pirates because when I looked up earlier on, after the flag that was waved off, the box marker still said first down. And if the uh, East Kilbride bench had have seen that, then they would be thinking exactly the same, that that was only third down, which is why they didn't get the kick return unit on in time. But as it is, it's now fourth and two, and the blitz offense comes back on. Marco Livy, and that's going to be a false start against the center. You can see the frustration from Lewis Slack there. Yeah. False start. On the offense, number 52. Five-yard penalty The fourth down. So it's a merry-go-round, punt team on, punt team off, false start, punt team back on. So I suppose justice is served there. And the ten men on the field penalty is almost wiped off for that false start. And let's see if Christian Rabuga can get his hands on this football and make something happen for the Pirates. Close to the end of this third period here. Under-19 Championship from London. Kick is up, and Rubruga may get a chance to return this. He's going to let it bounce once, and now thinks better of it. As Emmanuel Akaba fields the ball inside the 15-yard line, and the Pirates will go to work again. Again, terrible position for the EKP Pirates. They've had bad field position most of this game. And that punt with no return coming means that they're pinned back at the 12-yard line in a hole already. Just looking to get some kind of momentum going, some kind of score going for EKP. Of course, London Blitz, we know only two teams have scored a touchdown on them the entire season. The Tigers and then the Warriors in the playoffs. Um, and EKP got an uphill battle now to try and drive 90 yards down the field and get their own touchdown. So first down, ball is handed off. McKiggin had men bearing down on him. Kairi, Kairi rather, was uh, that man. Yeah, again, the, the inevitable and incessant pressure from this London Blitz team. I mean, this is how to play junior football. This London Blitz team just relentless in sending blitz after blitz. No breathing room for EKP. Backed up second and 14 again, close to their own five-yard line. 
So here we go, this time, little uh, keep by McKiggan on the option, and he does elect he he to pitch it out after he's gained a few yards, and Rory Hutton there is a recipient of the pitch, picks up positive yardage, but it's still going to be third and eight. So there you go, well, you can see what EKP can do when they get their athletes into space. They've got good speed, they've got good athletes, they're good at handling the football, and when they get space, they can make things happen. Let's see if they can run some magic on third down, get out of the way of these blitzing linebackers and get to some space. As we've already mentioned, and let's not get this wrong here, the Pirates are a decent football inside. You know, they're made, being made to to look Time a little... Out. East Kilbride. Being made to look There's a little... 27 seconds left in the quarter. Being made to look, look a little ordinary by this London defensive unit, but they are very, very useful with a number of high-caliber players. They are indeed, and they've dominated the North. They've been unbeaten in the North, so they come and play this London Blitz team, and no one's been able to touch the London Blitz, either from the South or the North. We hoped for a final. Matthew Davis will be hoping for more. There's still time. We want to get... They will want to get a touchdown and get something on the board and build some of their own momentum to make this score look respectable. So third and eight upcoming for the Pirates. Can they possibly find a little bit of magic to get past that first down marker and keep this latest drive alive. The last thing they want is the blitz offense mounting another attack on their goal line. So here comes McKiggan again, man in motion. And this time the ball, oh look at that pursuit. The lateral pursuit by Oshin again is just something to behold. He's been an absolute beast from that left outside linebacker position. Anything that's come in his direction, he's just gobbled up. And he swamps the running back that time. Loss of two, a uh, loss of more actually, loss of five. Brings up a long fourth down. Means the punter is gonna be very close to his own end zone. And this gets dangerous now for EKP if they bring a blitz. Well, on numerous occasions on the earlier punts, the blitz have brought pressure and got very close to the punter. And now, that is the end of the third quarter here in London. That is the end of the third quarter. London Blitz leading 26 to 0 over the East Kilbride Pirates in this under 19 British Championship here, part of Brit Bowl 33 weekend here from the New River Stadium. Matt Walker alongside Carl Walkinshaw on the commentary. Don't forget, later on this afternoon, we have the pinnacle of the British League final, the Tamworth Phoenix Champions of the North, taking on the London Warriors Champions of the South in Brit Bowl 33. That kicks off at 4 p.m. Our pregame show will start at 3.15 for that one. But Carl, a little bit flat here in the stadium with this scoreline here in favour of the hometown blitz. Yeah, it's the, the EKP Pirates fans are still here, but they want something to cheer about. They desperately want a touchdown or a score or a big play, something to cheer about. They'll they'll clutch onto just about anything right now. Even a decent punt, I think, would get them out of their seats and rousing this team. Let's see if EKP can do something in this fourth quarter. Doesn't appear that there's going to be much of a rush. That's a line drive again off the side of the boot. And Martinez elects not to field that one. It'll be interesting to see whether or not the Blitz elect to rotate players and give other opportunities to players with this lead that they have heading into the fourth quarter. Just looking to see if Marco Livy remains at quarterback, and he does as number two just comes onto the bottom of your screen there. So Livy and the offense remain... As the starters, O.C. Binney, number 24, going to be in the backfield alongside Nicholas Dolbaya. So there's still going to be plenty of pain heading the Pirates' way. First down, Blitz, two receivers, in fact three receivers, as this time the ball is handed off to O.C. Binney. And O.C. Binney picks up five on first down, and the Blitz continue to roll. Yeah, shout out to that offensive line as well for the London Blitz. They played ever so well so far. You've got players like Lewis Slack, who's playing that centre position. You've got players like Mark Jackson, players like Devante Kearney. These are players that don't get the glory that these running backs do, but they're the ones that make everything happen. And they've put up 26 points against a good AKP defence. 
So here we go again. As this time, Dolbaya gets a big hole up the middle. Makes, makes a tackle a miss, and he's down inside the 20 for another blitz first down, and they're threatening again. Ethan Stewart had to hustle back to make the saving tackle on that one, preventing more embarrassment for these EKP defenders. They won't want to see a f uh, fifth touchdown go in. As we mentioned early on, only one touchdown allowed in the regular season by this blitz defense, and uh, that trend looking similar today. Livy this time has two receivers to his left, and he looks to his right, and he's looking for the fourth touchdown of the day, and it's in and out of the hands of Sophocles. Good defending that time by the Pirates' DB. Yeah, Ethan Stewart, part of the 2018 Under-19 Plate Championship winning squad, doing his job against the mighty Sophocles. What a game he's had, eh? You couldn't have asked for more from Sophocles. Three touchdowns and going for his fourth. It's interesting, if you start thinking about um, MVPs for this game, obviously Sophocles has got the three TD grabs, but Livy has thrown three TDs. So which way do you give it? As that's another rush up the middle on second down. This time, Dolbaya picks up three, third and seven. Ben Gallagher adding to his number of stats in terms of tackles he's had to make today. Lots of good hard tackling going in from both these units. Both units, I've been impressed with the technique that they use. I've been impressed with the level of coaching that they have. It's been a good example of uh, British American football. Livy again, hands off, this time to Dolbaya once more, who runs to the right-hand side of the line, met by two Pirates, first of which is Fergus McNiven, linebacker number 91. Did a nice job there, Fergus, coming in to make the tackle. Scrum bring up fourth down. EKP still tenaciously trying to defend their goal line, prevent that fifth touchdown from going in. Dolbaya and Osai Bini remain in the backfield. Two receivers to the left for the blitz. And he looks to his left, comes back to the right. He's looking for that man again. Up, oh, corner of the end zone. Another great defensive play that time by Ethan Stewart. We mentioned his name a minute ago. And that was the fourth touchdown in the hands of Sophocles. But Stewart did a good job to disrupt that pass. Turnover on downs. And the East Kilbride Pirates can walk off feeling proud with those efforts. Yeah, the clan. Sophocles defended twice there in the end zone by Ethan Stewart. And Ethan Stewart does a nice job, doesn't draw a flag. So difficult when you're defending in your own end zone not to do something to cause an interference penalty. But he doesn't. He plays it clean and he defends against Sophocles. Gives EKP a chance to get, sorry, get a Carl. score. Sorry, Carl. It shows you the, the class of this blitz defence. As Black once again takes the football up the middle and there's nothing doing for him there. On average during the season, the Pirates have scored 30 points per game on average. And obviously they've not come up against their defence quite as stout as this blitz unit. And went to the fourth period, still that big zero on the board for the men from Scotland. And they'll be wanting to try and do something about that with eight minutes left. Ball handed off once again up the middle, and still there's no room through that defensive line of the blitz. Zach Pellard that time, number 77, down low on the running back. And then, of course, that man again, Sue and Oshin, on the top. One man down low, one man up high, brings that running back down. No chance to breathe on that play. Before you know where you are, if you're a pirate, you're facing third and long, third and 14 forces McKiggan to come to the air and this time he keeps it and he's got a little bit of room but there's now a flag down and that's a good hit McKiggan doesn't shy away from that tackle tackle made by McDowell but that looks like that's going to be coming back more than likely going to be a hold against the offense when the referee throws a flag from that part of the field and uh, nothing really going right and you could argue that it's all on the East Kilbride offense, but at the same time, you've got to give credit to the defense of the Blitz, who have just not allowed the offense of the Pirates to play. Holding on the offense, number 55. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So, declined the penalty by the Blitz. The Blitz declined the penalty because it doesn't benefit them. It still remains fourth down, and look at this fourth and six inside their own 20-yard line. And head coach Davis 
Matthew Davies elects to keep his offense on the field. McKigan going to the air. He's got a man that's through the hands of the defensive back once again, which is McDowell. And the Blitz are going to take over already inside the red zone of the Pirates. Nothing to lose. Matthew Davis is his last game in charge. Just to pay some tribute to him. He's been a coach for 15 years on uh, this team. I think there's a flag on the far side of the field. And it may well be that one of the defenders jumped. And if they did, that'll give a five-yard penalty to the Pirates. Offside. On the defence. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So a more manageable fourth down now for EKP. Yeah, nothing to lose, and they're going to go for it again here and see whether they can convert. So then Matthew Davis there, retiring as head coach of the East Kilbride Pirates today after 13 years' service. He's been a player and the club chair and the treasurer from 2011 onwards, offensive line coach at senior level, junior head coach from 2015 onwards. He's taken Time out. East Kilbride. 7.50 on the clock. He's taken the juniors from a losing team to three Brit Bowl finals in four years, won the under-19 plate championship in 2018 too. He'll be greatly missed by the Pirates, and it's uh, lovely that we can give him a little bit of airtime here for all the service he's given, not only to the Pirates, but to the British game over his time with them. He's uh, taking time out to spend with his family, and uh, a great ambassador and servant to the British game, Carl. Yep. So fourth down, fourth down for EKP, and actually, it looks like rather than going for it on fourth and short, Cochran is on to kick the ball away. Maybe the decision being made that I don't want to give the, pirate, the uh, Blitz an opportunity to get over that 30-point barrier. And Cochran fields a high punt, and he does manage to get the kick off. And actually, from where the kick was taken from, it's going to be about a 17-yard gain. So it does push the Blitz back a little bit, but they're still going to take over on their next offensive possession with under eight minutes left. It's half the field decision to, to make uh, in terms of going for it, not going for it on fourth and two when they go for it on fourth and seven. But uh, there you go. So, Carl, 26-0. I think it's a fair reflection of this game at this point. Dominance on both sides of the ball. The running game, you could argue, has set up that passing game for the Blitz. But you really, as any team trying to defend this offense, you, you don't know what to stop. You've got this four-horseman attack, as we see Mo Fletcher taking the handoff this time. So, Mo Fletcher... Getting a little bit of action for the Blitz. You've got that four horsemen attack, and then you've got Sophocles through the air. You've got Emmanuel Akaba through the air. And then when your offense takes the field, you have to try and stop that insane pressure up the middle. And they do rely heavily on that pressure. And uh, like you say, leave gaps, but it's been effective today. As this time the ball is handed off, and it's Dol Bayer again, who goes to the right-hand side. And he makes the first man hit. Makes my first one miss, rather. Ethan Stewart picks up a couple, and it will be third down. But it is just, it's a hard one to know for an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator what to do against this London side. You get into the point now in the game, you just want EKP to play for some pride, get to get a score, get something going on offense. You know, they've traveled a, a long way. They had a coach accident down here, getting down here. They've come all the way to London. They've stayed over. The fans are all down here and they've put on a showing, but they want to make sure that they get a better showing than, um, than they've given so far. They will want to get a score on the board. There is a flag down on the field. So we'll hear from our referee. Hold it. On the offense, number 20, 10 yard penalty, second down. Luke Zabar guilty of the hold on that one. Marches the Blitz offense back to midfield. So second and long, second, it looks second and about 18 from where we're standing up here. That same formation the Blitz have run all day, and that should be a false start, but it wasn't called. Looking for Emmanuel. A carver down the field. I did see one of the backs take a step forward before the ball was snapped, but the officials didn't notice that, so to get away with one there, third and long. Good defence there by Ethan Stewart, not allowing his receiver to get behind him to the end zone. 
That's going to bring up a long third down situation here. There's a chance for EKP here defensively to make a play. They're forcing the Blitz to come out and throw the ball. So Marco Livy, as he's done all afternoon, this time hands the ball back off and the, the ball is fumbled. And running back Mo Fletcher, new to the game, has had one carry on his second carry. Can't get a good handle on that one. Ball comes out and EKP will get the ball inside Blitz territory. There you go, chance on third down to make a play and they do make a play. That's a good job by the EKP Pirates coming in with some energy and forcing that fumble. Opportunity to... Um, to recover it so first down pirates if you're a neutral here you would love the pirates to be able to go home with at least a score on the board and get rid of that ugly zero against their name as the blitz called timeout once again they can see a man uncovered at the bottom of the screen here alex greenhague alex greenhague receiver number 11 you can see him just at the bottom corner there noticed Notice Christian Rebuga was uncovered at the bottom of the screen and had a Side bit of out. a panic. London, 6.14 left in the game. Interesting, Alex Greenhale, Greenhalge rather, received uh, recruiting interest from multiple D1 schools in the States, attended visits at Yale, Columbia and Princeton. So uh, obviously a very talented player and will be attending the NFL Academy this September. He's playing for Great Britain and he is a European All-Star. Not called his name this afternoon too much, but great potential for that young man, number 11, Alex Greenhalg for the Blitz. So first down, Pirates, inside Blitz territory. Four receivers out now. Whether or not that will mean the Blitz spread out and obviously it's going to and that's going to be a jump again as the flag comes out free play for mckiggan mckiggan snagged in the backfield but he is going to get a game of five yards on the plane it'll be first and five again quarterback just using his voice to pull that defenders offside so smart play by ekp not been able really to offside on the defense number 58 five yard penalty Bust out. Not been able to really to exploit the fact that they are getting these penalty yards but it is better play than there was in the first half I suppose the thinking is here, Carl, if you put four receivers out there, then all being well, the Blitz will cover those four receivers, which means one less man putting pressure on McKiggin. McKiggin goes up top and that one just floats out of his hand, doesn't get a real grip on the ball. And as he is, as he does release the football, he ends up on his back once again. I say, if you've got four receivers out there, four DBs, that means there's only five men left in this nine-man version, nine man version of the game. But still, those five men of the Blitz causing the Pirates all sorts of trouble. And it's five on four, because you have to take the quarterback into account. So the maths, you've always got a man over if you're the London Blitz. So second and five for the Pirates. McKiggan again tries to get this ball out. He's going up top again. He's got a man over the top, but he throws that five yards in front of Rubuga. And no chance for him to reel that one in. So third and five. Stadium feeling nicely here in uh, North London, White Hart Lane. New River Stadium. This is the under-19 championship game between the London Blitz and the East Kilbride Pirates. Precursor to the Premiership final as McKiggan goes into the flats. He hits Black, but Black is then immediately hit by Greenhalgh. Mentioned his name a minute ago. So from second, third and five, it becomes fourth and eight been really impressed with this London Blitz defense I mean you see the statistics don't you, you know all the number of shutouts only one team scoring against them during the regular season but in the flesh they just put immense amount of pressure on any team that they're playing whether it be a blitzing linebacker into the face of the quarterback or it's a tackle for a loss or even on that play just getting to the ball carriers really early and taking them to the ground before they can make a football move so what the pirates are trying to do now is put the blitz under pressure by punting away and i tell you what jack cochran does really well to elude that pressure and actually as he is eluding the pressure i think he has drawn a couple of flags there and whether or not this one will be enough for a first down, if it's deemed a personal foul, it will be an automatic first down. But he did well to escape the pressure and still get a kick off. And then the Pirates nearly managed to recover the ball at the other end. Cochrane and Oshin, Sue and Oshin having a battle on that one. We'll see what the referee calls him. Might be a stiff arm to the face. Personal foul. Face mask. On the defence, number 55. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So they call it on Oshin, actually. 
but it was a hell of a battle. Cochrane putting his arm right into Oshin's face just to drive him down to the floor and uh, manages to get a decent kick off as well. Good job, Jack Cochrane. I tell you what, you've got to always worry if you're a coach on the sideline there when you see your punter with the football in one hand with a defender bearing down on him. Is that football going to squirt out and give an opportunity? But Cochrane showed his strength there and not only managed to get out of the grasp of the face mask penalty but also kicked the ball away. But the Pirates still alive on this drive just outside the 30 yard line McKiggin this time hands off and Black has a little bit of room out to the left hand side stays on his feet good balance gets through the defenders he's down to the five yard line best run of the afternoon for Matthew Black and it's first in gold Pirates yeah he's part of that 2018 under 17 Brit Bowl winning team and he's doing a good job there that got the crowd to their feet they're excited about this they can squeeze their horns all these EKP fans dressed as pirates on the sideline here, blowing their horns and enjoying themselves. Let's see if EKP can get a touchdown here. All of a sudden, the stands here come to life with the hope that the pirates might be able to break into the end zone. Cochran starts running laterally and then thinks, I better try and head upfield. But he gets back to the line of scrimmage and well, actually he loses two, so it's second in goal. Pirates have had goal-to-go situations before and not managed to get anything from it. That no-huddle offense, McKiggin and the offense desperate to break the goal line and break their duck if they can on this drive. They're going to get three more opportunities, but that's going to be a false start and that's going to make their task a little harder. Yeah, this is the trouble, isn't it? Playing London Blitz put you under all that pressure. So the first play, you lose two yards Prior and then the you snap. lose another five. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty, second down. And the blitz may give you a little bit of something, a sniff of something, but then they all of a sudden they go, oh, hang on a minute, we need, we're the London Blitz, we can't let this happen, and they solidify, and they cause the errors there. So, pressure coming again, they've gone back to this tight formation, have the Pirates, oh, and Matthew Black, as soon as he touched the football, a flag comes out on the far side, and that once again could be encroachment, as number 39, Tunde Ganyu does a little celebratory dance, but that might be in vain if that one's going against the Blitz. It could bring the five yards back that the false start took off the Pirates a couple of seconds ago. It's that timed interior blitz up the A-gap. Offside. On the defence, number 26 lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. On that one, they got it wrong. It's going to give the EKP a little bit more of a push towards this goal line. But they are going to have to come up with a special play to beat this London Blitz defence. They are not going to give up a score easily. They're very proud of this shutout and they want to keep it that way. Second and goal from the seven yard line. Cochrane has a little bit of space there, gets inside the five and he's still on his feet all the way down to the one yard line. And that's how far the Pirates are away from breaking this duck. One yard away, two attempts for this Scottish outfit to get rid of that zero. Can they manage to find something special? Two attempts, you think that all they need to do is maybe McKiggan just stick his head in there, but we know the pressure coming up the middle. And I don't think there's much ground as Cochrane has to take a knee after that last surging effort. I tell you what, even though we've got this 26-0 scoreline and obviously the, the Blitz are going to be crowned under-19 champions, it's a good finish. It gives the crowd from Scotland, all those travelling fans, something to really get behind. And it'd be really nice for the neutral if the Pirates can manage to get on the score. But like you say, if you're a Blitz player, what's that goal line stand like? You know if you're a London Blitz player, you know you're a good team when the crowd goes wild just because you score a touchdown rather than actually win the game. But that's the situation the London Blitz have found themselves in all year. They've been so, so dominant against all comers that uh, just giving the EKP Pirates a little bit of hope here is what uh, what's needed to, to get them into the end zone. It's interesting to see that um, the Blitz have an official training partner known as the Dynamic Sports Academy, DSA, and to date 25 players have gone on to play US football in high schools and universities. Um, and all but two of those have come right through the Blitz youth and junior programs. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's great when you've got that infrastructure and you've got the setup that the Blitz have of the, uni the junior, the youth programs, but also that training partner, the Dynamic Sports Academy, 
uh, obviously producing the caliber of players that can then break into the sport in the US. It bodes well for the Blitz against their crosstown rivals, the London Warriors as well, because uh, that generation of players that are coming up, the Blitz are dominant over the Warriors. Currently in senior football, the Warriors very dominant for the last 10 years. We'll maybe come back to that subject later. Here we go then, third down, third and goal for the Pirates. Can they find a way through this dominant Blitz defense? McKigan is going to take it himself and he's going to be backed up and lose five on the play. And now fourth down, there's, there's just no time at all. Yeah, Kieran, do Obby again coming on from that right hand side this time straight in the quarterback's face nowhere for him to go and it's fourth down now do you just get three on the board or do you try and go for the touchdown or do you fake the field goal and go for some kind of score they've got to want to break this duck aren't they Matt so we'll see what they do here it looks like That's they're going to kick. That's a two minute warning two minute warning at 153 and we have reached the two minute warning here at the under 19 championship I tell you what, it's all well and good going for the kick, Carl, but I'm not sure the time it takes for the ball to get to the holder, the holder get the ball on the ground, and the kicker complete his run. I can quite imagine this blitz defensive line being all over this one, but let's see. On to attempt the kick is Ben Hewitt. Can Ben Hewitt, and it's a fake, but the fake by Black doesn't really end up working because he bobbles the ball. He gets back to the five-yard line. The pile is still being pushed as the Pirates try desperately, and he's going to be marked down at the one-yard line. It could even be the one-foot yard, one-foot line. It is that close. Wow, look at the de pass of devastation on this team as they try and rugby scrum the ball. Look where that football is, Cole. Over the line. It is touching, practically touching the goal line. And what an effort by Black and that special teams unit to carry on that surge. He was initially hit at about the five and still managed to surge forward all the way centimetres away. That is an incredible effort, not only by the Pirates, but give credit once again to the defence of the Blitz. Yeah, Blitz holding firm as they have done all season, making it very difficult to get a point on them. Now it's over to the EKP defence to see whether they can take advantage of this field position. Oh, lovely cuts there by the running back. And that is Ose Binney who dances his way out of his own end zone and gets up close to the 20-yard line. And there we go on display again the caliber of athlete that these blitz guys have uh, you, you mentioned earlier on about the warriors and blitz at the junior game it did amaze me when i saw the result of the semi-final i think it was something like 43 6 the blitz juniors against the warriors juniors and as you say as time progresses is that going to have an impact on the senior game we'll see the london warriors senior team in action later on this afternoon against the tamworth phoenix in brick bowl 33 the premiership final we look forward to that one 315 that one begins as number 26 this time takes the carry it's Diobi and Diobi still on his feet and there's a flag down and the ball is out and the ball is still loose and it looks like that's covered up by a blitz player interesting to see what this flag was at the end of a long run like that it generally goes against the running team but whether or not that's a penalty against the Pirates for maybe trying to grab anything they could and get a hand on a face mask, whether a personal foul penalty. We'll wait and have a listen shortly. Here's our official, David Knight. Holding on the offense, number 31. 10 yard penalty, first down. So it is against. Shout out to Roger Goodgraves, actually, the head linesman, just as that referee makes the call. Roger's played football when the game very first started in the UK. It's his last game today as a head linesman. And uh, he's officiated great, and he helps us also in the next game. He's going to be helping us with, uh, with the clock. So congratulations to him on a long career, and well done today on your officiating. First and 20 this time. Osei Binney on the carry. Picks up a yard, but no more. In fact, apologies, picks up almost 12 yards. Bring up second and eight. Now just going through the motions a little bit. Interesting that they've got the two starting backs on again. And uh, the cameo appearance by Mo Fletcher seems to be shelved for the time being. Clock continues to run. We're under a minute now. Sorry, Carl, go ahead. London Blitz 
just as we come towards the end of this game, London Blitz have been so dominant, but it is worth mentioning their coach, Jason Henry, who's had a fantastic career with London Blitz at junior level over a number of years. And they really have impressed throughout this season and in previous seasons. Been dominant as this game comes to an end. A tribute to Jason Henry and the London Blitz, who are going to run out winners in this one. London Blitz 26, EKP 0. And here comes the Gatorade for coach. And there he goes and gets it. Jason Henry, we salute you, as do the whole of the London Blitz team. Very excited here to be national under-19 champions. It's the London Blitz. And looking at those scenes, you'd, you'd think that uh, that was a new experience for the team and the uh, the players. But that just goes to show you, in under-19 football, the turnover is so frequent. It's... We, were, we mentioned earlier on, we spoke to the coaches, and it is very much, you don't know what you're going to get at the beginning of each season, and the identity of your team will change year on year because of the influx of new players and the outgoing of old players. And it just shows you what it means to this London Blitz team, even though they may have been favourites for this one, and they may have run out 26 to nil winners. Um, it, the emotions, that says it all. Great pictures there at the end. We're going to hand down to the studio with the score 26 to 0, but we'll join us back shortly for the trophy presentation. EP Sports brings you the UK's largest range of American football equipment, from helmets and shoulder pads to gloves and boots. They stock all the latest items from the biggest brands with great prices and fast shipping options all across Europe. What's more, EP have just launched their own team wear range, allowing you to rep your program in a huge range of garments from top suppliers. You can even set up your own team shop, and to kick things off, EP are offering up custom team polo shirts at just £10 a pop. To learn more, check out epsports.co.uk. Good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're watching this. Hope you have a great day. I hope this podcast has made you smile a little bit. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into and what we do and why we do it. But yeah, just keep on listening and thank you. Hello and welcome back. That is the ball game for the under 19s final in Brit Bowl 33. I am joined once again by the ex snow guys. I've got Tinks and Emeka here with me to do the post game rundown. How are, doing? You're, you're, How are you're... you doing? Ah, we're doing good. We're doing good. Yep. Enjoyed the game. Unfortunately, the, uh, the scoreline just wasn't as close as we thought it would be. Yeah, I mean. Let's talk about that first. So we all thought that it was going to be a really close game uh, between EKP and London Blitz. Normally it is. We've For seen sure. in previous under-19 finals. It's been more of a shootout than what it was today. However, EKP just couldn't seem to finish it today, could they? No, they yeah. couldn't. No, I think it, in the end it came down to speed for me. Watching the game, EKP could definitely execute on certain plays, but they couldn't get anywhere because I feel like the Blitz guys were just a, just a bit faster than them. I think you can see the difference. I think the main difference today was the level of physicality. Um, the Blitz just had that completely under wraps. Um, you, you can see glimpses. You can see that the, the East, Kilbrough Pirates, uh, East Kilbrough Pirates had good fundamentals. We know that coach um, uh, Matthew Davis instills that in his players from a young age. But we just didn't see that today. We didn't see the likes of um, um, Jonathan Lefham coming out and sh coming out of his shell. We didn't see that. We didn't see the stable of running backs that we're used to seeing. Um, at previous previous brick balls, we didn't see that, um, and they just couldn't get get the final third. They just couldn't make that 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 difference today, and I think that was the biggest difference. The physicality, yeah. um, they couldn't deal with that. Definitely, and I think that what you were touching on there with the running backs, yeah. constant change up in personnel with the yeah. running backs. When you look at the running backs, you've got yeah. number thirty-two Matthew Black, you've got number thirty Greg yeah. Black, you've then got number two Jack Cochran, you've got. Yeah. 
we, we mentioned a couple yeah. more in the first but the thing is yeah. they all got their game time yeah and they were all like it was it was one of those where they were constantly changing it up and to be fair yeah. towards the end it seemed like it seemed like matthew black and greg black were actually their best hope in getting somewhere yeah. down this field yeah we know matt black is dangerous i mean all season what he's on he was on 483 yards for the season, 60 day TDs, and he couldn't get into the end zone. And we're not used to that. We're not used to seeing uh, at least uh, EKP Pirates youth t uh, 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 junior team not scoring. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a big shock. I mean, I spoke to Coach Dave, uh, Davis a couple of days before coming here, and, I, mm -hmm. and he told me that the biggest advantage they had was the fact that they have a stable of running backs. And I thought to myself, hmm. Is that a good or bad thing? And it, and it, and it posed today to be a bad thing because they couldn't get stable. They couldn't get anything going. And it's all today. And do you think, obviously, touching on there about Matthew Davies, obviously their, their head coach, yeah. it is going to be a bit of a gutting ending for him because as, yeah. as we said at the start yeah. of the show, um, the EKP head coach, Matt Davies, is actually going to be stepping away uh, from the EKP under-19s team after coaching them for, God, how many years now? Four years now. Four, Four years. years now, yeah. And yeah. getting them to this level. So... Looking at the future for them, obviously, him stepping away, spending more time with his family, looking more towards the women's game and mm. a couple of other things. Well, how do you think they're going to move forward from this? I still think they're going to move forward strongly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, just look at the yeah. size of the squad they bought all the way down to London. I mean, there's 50-plus guys over there. They could field a senior team right now if they yeah. wanted to. Yeah. I think as, you know, a future for the organisation as a whole, it's looking very bright, very bright indeed. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, obviously it's, you know, bad for them to lose their head coach. Yeah. But they still got, they're still going to retain a lot of talent. I mean, there's a lot of coaching staff as well. Yeah, I mean, East Kilbride have a, a good, I mean, a structure in place. Mm -hmm. They have a good infrastructure with a man that had the chairman at the, at the top of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're only going to see great things from from the East Kilbride Pirates. I mean, they're a good organisation. We can't take that away oh, from definitely, them. Definitely, definitely. They yeah. used to be in at Brit Ball. I mean, sometimes they never make it to the promised land, but they're used to being here. And it's only a matter of time before those younger players emerge into, into champions. Definitely. And yeah, let's, yeah. let's just touch on the Blitz for a second, because obviously mm -hmm. yeah. they're the winners of this. 26-0, four touchdowns, three by number 84, Sophocles, and uh, one for number 24, um, O.C. Binney. Like, I'm not being funny, but they, they did. They just ran away with it today. And with two players like that coming up, like, on mm -hmm. top, like... It was it was the Marco and Temi show today. Uh, I mean, those guys are something else. I mean, if they're not thinking about NFL Academy, yeah. they should be. And if NFL Academy not thinking about them, there you go. I well, mean, Temi's already made it into the academy. Okay, yeah, good, he has. Really. We spoke to him on the way up here um, before the game, and you know, he seemed quite nervous, but you know, he still executed very well. Mm. He did very well. He had a very good game. I think all their running backs did. Yeah, and when we backs. look at it, there's 25 players over the past however many, like God knows how many years, that have gone to the US into mm. high school programs or college programs from the under from the under 19s blitz team, and that's just the under 19s blitz team. Mm. Um, so as you can see on our screen right now, the East Kilbride Pirates are currently receiving um, their runners up medals, um, and li like like good sportsmen, uh, sportsmen always do. The Blitz are uh, congratulating uh, the East Kilbride Pirates on a great game. Um, and I think East Kilbride will be happy just to even be getting that runners-up medal. To make it to a final is, is a is the success in itself. Oh yeah. I mean yeah. they should hold their heads up, hold their heads up high. Mm -hmm. I mean they're young guys. I mean don't 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 beat yourself up. Um, as much as the, the, uh, I don't condone losing losing is all, isn't always a bad thing. Yeah. But the most important thing is how do you get up from this? How do you bounce back? How do you rally the troops and move forward? Yeah, so Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think that he leading on to the Blitz obviously winning and we just we were just talking about that. We are now going to head up back to Matt and Carl in commentary uh, to take you through the London Blitz trophy lift. Thank you, Tash. Great work as ever. It's brilliant to have those guys from X and O's on board this weekend, Carl. Certainly is, Matt. They've done a great job doing little vox pops with the crowd, bringing us all more of the game here at New River Stadium. And led by Israel Akano, the London Blitz come forward to collect their winners' medals. And no end of players. If you look down the numbers there, there's 11, Alex Greenhalg. It's... Uh, Fantastic to see all those players. Matteo McDowell going through there, number 82, Emmanuel Acaba. Just name after name after name who you'll see loads more of if you follow British American football over the coming years. Yeah, Nicole McCulloch there, the chair of the British American Football Association, handing out the medals. One thing's worth saying about this London Blitz team, even though you can see the skills of the athletes on the field, is the off-the-field culture. 
There's the incredible brotherhood that the London Blitz have over a number of years. It has a real focus on discipline, on respect, on being accountable. And it provides players at this young age. Remember, all of these guys that you're seeing on the screen under 19 years old. It provides them with that brotherhood that they can draw on for life. So it's, so, a, it's a legacy that's way beyond the win-loss columns, Matt. Absolutely. I really like about this game as well. You've obviously got the winning blitz there, but in the background, just off camera at the moment, these Kilbride Pirates hang around. You can see them there in the background now. They hang around respecting the efforts of the champions as well as their own efforts. As Nicole McCulloch prepares to award the trophy, but first the MVP award. And we... Uh, Probably, it's difficult maybe to pick out. I would uh, go with either the quarterback or Sophocles. And there it is. It's Sophocles, we think. We think, uh, the stadium announcement, just an announcing our MVP. But we're just waiting for the Baffer officials to confirm that. But yeah, it's, it's great to know. And out he comes there, big number 84. We're walking towards the front and Marco. Livy also at the front there, number two, with the medal around his neck. Waiting to see who that MVP will be awarded to. And it is number 84 for the Blitz. It is Leonardo Sophocles, and I think well-deserved, hauling in those three touchdown grabs, Cole. Yeah, he's, he was the kind of Jerry Rice, wasn't he, of today. He was, uh, Livy was played great. But Sophocles was just dominant through the air. And remember, all of those passes, those touchdowns that he scored, were contested by the defensive backs. And so Sophocles put on a hell of a show for us. And I think that's deserved. You could have gone Livy, but I think with three touchdowns, you do go with Sophocles. So here we go then. Oshin and Livy raise the trophy, which proclaims the London Blitz under-19s are British champions for the 2019 season. Great scenes here at the New River Stadium. And that trophy is held aloft. Big celebration tonight. We're going to hand back down to Tash just to finish things off in the studio and let you continue to watch these scenes as the London Blitz celebrate. Tash, over to you. So as we've just seen, London Blitz are now lifting their winner's trophy. They are the under-19 champions of Brit Bowl 33. I am still joined by Tinks and Mecca from X's and O's. Obviously, we saw um, we saw number two uh, Marco Levy, and we saw uh, we saw number fifty-five uh, Oshin lifting the trophy there. Big guy Oshin, we saw Very him literally yank the trophy out of Tinks out of. Sorry, I just looked at you, Tinks, and was hand, like, no. not out of your hand, <laughs> out of Marco Levy's hands there. Um, and he was a predominant player for the Blitz. If you look at it, he was instrumental to their defense, constantly pushing the uh, the EKP pirate, the sorry, the East Kilbride Pirates back. Um, do you think that he could have been the reason why EKP couldn't get going? Hundred percent, hundred percent. The guy was solid all game, yeah. all game. I mean, he, obviously you mentioned his size before, but he's fast as well mm. and he's explosive. Uh, he was definitely a standout guy for me. That's a young linebacker call there. Mm. Um, and one thing I always say about good linebackers is being able to anticipate when to blitz and the right time to blitz. And clearly they're showing that they got that, they got that in the bag. And that's a huge fundamental for a defensive player to, 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 uh, to, to deal with. Mm. And I think, man, this young, this young blitz team are going to be something in, in the future um, coming up. Um, I have to say I've been very impressed with the level of game oh, yeah. like not yeah. just physically but mentally as well they understand yeah. the game and they can play well. Yeah. well when you look at the running back so obviously um we touched on just before um number 84 leonardo mm -hmm. sophocles obviously getting the mvp there well deserved um however when you look at your running backs number 21 number 24 number nine they had some strong running backs for the blitz yeah. and they're only going to get stronger aren't they oh yeah they're young they're still young um Obviously, there's always room for improvement. They still got room for improvement. We saw a lot of north. We saw a lot of sideline movement. Mm -hmm. I want to see a bit more uh, uh, north-south movement and knowing when to anticipate and use your blocks a bit better. But the coaches will teach them that as they as they get. So yeah. unfortunately, we are going to have to leave it there, and we are going to be back at quarter past three for a live broadcast of the Premier Final. It will be Brit Bowl 33 here at the New River Stadium in London. We'll see you then. Cool.